What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, I'm going to provide you with a list of tools and resources that we're going to be utilizing in this course. So, there are four main tools. The first one is openai.com, the second one is ChatGPT, the third one is Dolly, and the fourth one is Leonardo AI. So for those of you who don't know this, um, ChatGPT and Dolly, so those two are products of OpenAI. So you need to create your account on OpenAI first before accessing ChatGPT and Dolly, right? And Dolly is basically text to image generator, just the same thing like Midjourney and Leonardo AI is also the same text to image generator, right? So yeah, uh, so these are like four main tools and the rest are supporting tools. So we also have Agent GPT, uh, which is our autonomous AI agent. Uh, and we have Hug and Face, uh, Product Aspos, um, Flow GPT, Fusion AI, and Cook Up AI. So all these things are AI prompt generator, right? So let's talk about the first one, Open AI. So I'm just gonna click on it. It will take me here, as you guys can see. Um, welcome to Open AI. So if you go to product, um, OpenAI has several different products here. ChatGPT is one of them. Uh, they also have GPT-4, uh, Dolly, uh, which is text to image generator. All right, so you need to create your account here. You need to create your account on OpenAI before accessing uh, ChatGPT and Dolly. And it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and it's completely free, all right? All you need to do is just to click sign up here. And the good news here, OpenAI has been fully integrated with uh, Google so I'm pretty sure like vast majority of you guys have your Gmail account so all you need to do is just to sign up using your uh, Gmail and that's it all right so I'm just gonna close this step let's go to the second tool uh, which is chat GPT as you guys can see um, this is chat GPT this is basically AI chatbot where you can ask any questions and chat GPT is going to answer your questions with human like answers right so yeah um, Obviously, this is like the main tool that we're going to be utilizing in this course since uh, we're going to be concentrating mostly on chat GPT prompts, right? And the third one here is Dolly. All right, so Dolly is basically text to image generator, as you guys can see here. Um, you can create your account for completely free on OpenAI and you get up to 50 uh, credits. So it means you're able to generate up to 50 uh, images using Dolly for free, right? And we also have Leonardo AI, so I'm just gonna click on it. This is very similar to Dolly or Mid Journey, um, text to image generator. And yeah, it's going to be free, right? You don't need to spend any money here. Uh, Leonardo AI gives you 150 credits every single day, so you can generate up to 150 images per day for completely free. All right, and the next one here is agentgpt.rework.ai. Uh, so this is basically um, AI autonomous agent. This is like one of the latest AI technology. As a matter of fact, agentgpt is even newer compared to ChatGPT. All right, so you might be wondering like what we're going to use this for. Well, this is going to be your AI assistance to help you generating high quality and effective prompts. As you guys can see here, uh, there are like several different options. Um, actually, not only limited to these three, but these three are just like examples. So the first one here is platform GPT, write some code to make a platformer game. So you can ask Agent GPT to write you code. You can ask ChatGPT to uh, plan, plan a detailed trip, or maybe mm, ask Agent GPT to do research for you, right? But this time we're going to uh, utilize this autonomous AI to uh, generate us prom, high quality prom, obviously, right? And you might be wondering then, what's the difference between ChatGPT and Agent GPT? Well, ChatGPT is the chatbot where you can um, ask any questions and ChatGPT is going to answer your questions, but Agent GPT is not the chatbot. Agent GPT is basically like AI assistance or usually call it as like your own uh, staff, right? So you can assign Agent GPT to a particular task, particular role, and Agent GPT without having your supervision is able to operate uh, autonomously, which is great, right? 
all you have to do is just to uh, give a name to this agent and also set the goal. Maybe, hey, uh, generate me a prompt for um, marketing or for copywriting, whatever, and then click um, generate, all right? And that's it, wait, and Agent GPT is going to gather all information, gather all data, and provide you with very meaningful insights, all right? So we're going to um, utilize this and this course. And the next one here is hugandface.co. I'm going to open all this uh, prompt generator, right? So the second one is product.aspose. The third one is flow GPT. Um, most of them are pretty much the same, you know? Um, I just like to provide you with like many different options. So if you don't like like one of them, then you might still have other options to choose. All right, so let's get to the first one, uh, which is hug and face. So the only thing that you need to do here is to type in the basic prompt and then click submit and hug and face is going to generate you like more complex prompt, right? So as you guys can right here, this app generates ChatGPT prompt it is based on board model trained on this data set. So you can even see the data set um, of this platform. Simply enter personal that you want the prompt to be generated based on, right? So you can choose like the kind of like the character here, right? So yeah, if you have time, you might want to take a look at the data set. Uh, if you're curious about the data set, all right, and the second one here is Aspos. Um, so here is the URL, products.aspos.app. If you don't know how to get there, just click on this this link. All right, so it's extremely similar to the previous one, Hug and Face. All you need to do is just to type in the basic prompt here and also select like your intentions. Maybe you want to create ChatGPT prompt and click on this. You want to um, generate essay and then click this or you might want to ask questions about health, then click doctor. You might want to uh, get answers regarding to uh, accounting, then click accountant. So just select the relevant topics, right? So yeah, um, there are like many different topics available here. All right, so let's close this tab and let me um, go to flow GPT. All right, so this is another uh, tool. This is another uh, prompt generator. As you guys can see here, there are like many different um, topics available down here. So you can select the one that is relevant to you. But if you don't find uh, anyone that is relevant to like your topic that you might want to write down here and see if there is any, right? So the way it works is also going to be very similar to the previous two. Uh, just write the like basic prompt here and then click generate and that's it all right so yeah i'm just gonna close this let's move on to the next one here fusion ai uh, as you guys can see um the way it works also kind of the same like the previous one the only thing that you need to do here is to type in the basic prompt and then click generate prompt let me give you an example um marketing campaign that's just gonna be an example here and then click generate prompt so now it is generating the prompt for us and look at this right off 500 essay explaining the key components of successful marketing campaign including target audience budget so um you can utilize this tool to generate like more complex prompt from a very basic uh prompt like this all right and the last one here um, is cookup.ai. As you guys can see, right now we are on cookup.ai. Uh, the way it works also very similar to the previous tools. All we need to do is to select um, the topic that is relevant to to our questions. For example, you have a question related to uh, programming, just like programming, right? And as you guys can see, there are like many different uh, topics related to programming. You can uh, select the one that is most suitable with your topic that is most relevant with your topic right so there are like many different options here okay so that so that's all guys i'm just gonna close this step um that's all i'll see you guys in the next video where i'm going to introduce you to the concept of prompt engineering so i'll see you guys there bye what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video i'm going to introduce you to prompt engineering for those of you 
who are already familiar with prompt engineering, feel free to skip this video. However, if you're not really familiar with prompt engineering, especially those of you who are new to this game, make sure you stay in this video and pay very close attention to things that I'm about to explain in this video. So let's begin with the first question here. What is prompt engineering? Well, it is basically the process of designing and refining prompts or instructions given to a language model. So let me give you an example here. So as you guys can see, right now we are on ChatGPT. So this is basically AI chatbot where you can ask any questions and ChatGPT is going to answer your questions with human-like answer. All right, so let's say you are a content creator, right? So let's say you are a YouTuber. You want to create a video about fictional history, but you're stuck. Um, you don't have any idea in your head. So you want to utilize ChatGPT to generate the content script for your YouTube videos, right? So let's um, type the prompt generate me content script for my youtube videos about fictional history right so i hit enter and see what chat gpt is going to generate us right we'll see Okay, cool. Title, Unveiling the Enigmatic Tapestry, Exploring the Fascinating World of Fictional History. Alright, so as you guys can see, ChatGPT is generating the content script for us. Um, the introductions, the first segment, second segment here. Pretty cool, right? Um, the third segment. Alright, keep going. The fourth segment. I don't know how long it's going to be. Maybe that's going to be a pretty long content script, I guess. Whoa, the fifth segment. And finally, the, the conclusion, right? And also, um, what else? Oh, that's it. The conclusion, All right? So yeah, as you guys can see, um, this is the output generated by ChatGPT. And to generate this output, um, we use this prom right so if you might be wondering like what prompt engineering is so it's basically a process to create or to design these instructions right so to generate this output we need to write this prompt so prompt engineering means the process to engineer to process to design this type of prompt make it as good as possible make it as effective as possible so ChatGPT is going to be able to understand what we want. It's going to be able to understand our instructions. And obviously the end goal here, ChatGPT is able to generate the output that we expect, right? So yeah, uh, so that's the definitions of uh, prompt engineering. Let's go back to our slide. And let's talk about the objective here, right? So let me do the slideshow. The aim is to guide the model's output in the desired directions by providing clear and explicit instructions. All right, so if we use this as our case study, obviously uh, the end goal here, the objective that we're trying to accomplish is to make ChatGPT to generate us content script for our YouTube videos about fictional history, right? That's the goal here. That's the reason why we wrote this prompt. And then uh, by using this prompt as the input, we're able to make ChatGPT to generate us this whole content script, right? So obviously the end goal here is to generate us um, content script for our fictional history YouTube videos. All right, so let's move on to the third one here, uh, technologies behind prompt engineering. So let me do the slides here. So as you guys can see here, there are three um, technologies that I listed here. Obviously there are more than these three, however, these three are like the most um, important one. So let's begin with the first one here. NLP, or it stands for Natural Language Processing. So NLP encompasses a range of techniques and algorithm that enable computers to understand, interpret, and generate human language. So NLP technologies, uh, for example, like tax classifications, named entity cognitions and sentiment analysis are employed to analyze and process from ensuring they provide clear instructions and constraints to the language model all right so um 
NLP is also like the tool that was mainly used to translate the human language to a computer language. So that's the reason why NLP plays a very uh, crucial role here. So let's move on to the next one here, RL, or it stands for Reinforcement Learning. So Reinforcement Learning is basically a machine learning approach where an agent learns to make decisions by interacting with an environment and receiving feedback or rewards. So in prompt engineering, RL can be used to find tune language model based on feedback from human evaluators or users. By applying RL algorithms, prompt engineers can iteratively optimize the model output by reinforcing desired behavior and adjusting prompt formulations. As you guys know, um, ChatGPT allows users to provide uh, follow-up corrections. So every single time um, ChatGPT generated output that is out of the context, we as the users are able to make uh, follow-up corrections um, to fix the directions of the conversations generated by ChatGPT, right? And every single time um, there is a corrections being made, that's when reinforcement learning algorithms involve, right? So yeah, um, that's the second technology. And the third one here is called transfer learning. So transfer learning involves training a model on one task, then leveraging that knowledge to perform well on different related tasks. Language models like ChatGPT are pre-trained on large datasets, acquiring a general understanding of language patterns and context. And in this case, um, prompt engineering utilizes transfer learning by fine-tuning these uh, pre-trained models on specific tasks or domains. This enables prompt engineers to leverage the existing language capabilities of the models and customize them for specific prompt-based interactions. So yeah, um, as you guys know, as you guys can imagine, how large is the pre-trained dataset? It's extremely large, right? And it is very crucial for ChatGPT to have the capability of transferring knowledge from one task to another uh, relevant task. And that's when transfer learning uh, comes into play. So you guys, um, I think that's it. That's all you need to know. I'll see you guys in the next video where I'm going to explain how prompt engineering works. So I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, I'm going to explain briefly how prompt engineering actually works. So as you guys can see, uh, we're going to use this uh, cool illustration. So if you want to learn more, just click on this link. It will take you to this cool website it's called unite.ai. And if you have time, you might want to um, read these descriptions. They have very um, comprehensive explanations about how uh, prompt engineering works. And they have very cool uh, diagram, cool flowcharts that will help you a lot to understand the concept. So yeah, I'm just going to close this tab and I'll go to this whiteboard. I'm going to make this image a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Just going to close this ads kind of annoying all right so here we go i'm just gonna grab my pencil as you guys can see here uh we have the language model so this is our chat gpt all right so this circle mm -hmm. represents chat gpt all right so i'm sorry if my handwriting looks kind of weird i'm not really used to this whiteboard to be honest with you and the data set that is being used by chat gpt is the pre-trained data set and the model is GPT-4, right? GPT-4. Let me write that down first. GPT-4, here we go. Okay, cool. So as you guys can see here, um, to initialize the conversations, the user needs to enter the prompt, right? So this is just an example. Hey, this is a conversation between a customer and a polite, helpful customer service agency, right? And the input indicator is simply just a specifications about uh, what type of uh, questions, what type of input uh, this is. For example, like, okay, questions of the customers. All right. So yeah, um, so the first thing, when the user enter this prompt, it will be taken to this model. And that's usually called a context analysis. So this is 
the step where ChatGPT processes the user input to understand the provided context, identifying important tokens, and comprehending the overall meaning and intent behind the text. All right, so that's like the very first step. Then, the next step is going to be competitions and knowledge integrations. So the model, uh, which is GPT-4 in this case, performs complex competitions on the analyzed context, leveraging its knowledge base acquired during training, and it combines its understandings of grammar, language patterns, and accumulated information to generate response that aligns with the given input, which is this input, right? Yeah, then the next step is response generation, which is the last step of this process where ChatGPT is going to generate you the output, right? So through the analysis of context and integration of knowledge, ChatGPT is able to provide you with the relevant output uh, based on whatever input uh, given by the user. So yeah, guys, that's how it works. Um, obviously, I don't want to be very technical here because um, some of you or maybe most of you are not coming from technical background, right? So I'm just going to explain it in non-technical language and make it easier to understand. All right, so I think that's it. That's all you need to know about how um, prompt engineering works, especially like ChatGPT prompt engineering. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to balance specificity and generality when it comes to prompt. So I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to talk about how to balance prompt specificity and generality, all right? So we're going to talk about pros and cons of having a prompt that is too specific and a problem that is too general or too broad, right? So uh, let's start with problem that is too specific. Obviously, uh, there are pros and cons. So when it comes to the positive things of having specific prompt, it can lead to highly precise responses that directly address the desired information or task, minimizing the ambiguity, right? And another positive thing is control. So like you have more authority over um, the generated output. So a specific prompt provides more control over the output, allowing prompt engineers to guide the model's behavior and generate responses according to predefined uh, criteria, right? But obviously uh, there is nothing perfect, right? So um, specific prompts have these two pros, but also has um, a negative thing too. So if you have two specific prompts, Actually, it may restrict the model's ability to generate creative or alternative responses beyond the given instructions, right? So if you are expecting ChatGPT to generate you, um, you know, creative output, then obviously you don't want to have very specific prompts because you're going to limit, you're going to put limitations on the AI creativity in this case. And let's talk about a uh, general prompt. So if your prompt is too general, um, it will allow the model to exhibit more creativity and explore various possibilities leading to potential innovative or unexpected responses. So those are definitely good thing to have, right? However, um, there are also uh, cons too when it comes to general prompts. So the first one is ambiguity, all right? So general prompts may lead to ambiguous or unclear instructions resulting in responses that like focus or fail to address the intended tasks or equations and also lack of precision so general prompts can generate responses that are too broad or not specific enough potentially providing the incomplete or inaccurate information so let's play around with chat gpt this time to see um what is the actual effect of having two uh, general or two broad prompts. So let's say we want ChatGPT to generate a story about historical events in World War II, but actually we want to specifically um, get the story of um, the battle in Iwo Jima, just an example, right? S however, if we type our prompt to be like too broad, too general, let's say we just uh, create our prompt like this generate me story of World War II. 
that's it this is too general this is too broad and guess what chat gpt is going to generate us like the main storyline of world war ii that's it chat gpt is not going to specify um okay so what's happening in the battle of iwo jima something like that no right because chat gpt is only going to generate you um what you're asking so if you want specifically um to get the story of battle of iwo jima then you need to specify it in the prompt so generate me so this time we're going to rewrite the prompt but in a more specific way um clearly telling chat gpt what we want right generate me the story generate me uh, the historical events in iwo jima right the battle of iwo jima see as you guys can see if we are being specific chat gpt is going to generate us like what we want right so that's the reason why we need to be more specific but also at the same time you need to keep this in mind if your prompt is too specific then most likely you're going to put limitations on chat gpt creativity right so just make sure you keep that in mind so let's go back to our slide then the follow-up question will be how to know if my prompt is specific enough but not too specific right because if your prompt is too specific you're going to limit chat gpt creativity but at the same time if your prompt is too general too broad then you're going to uh, cause ambiguity right so how to know well there is no exact answer to that questions unfortunately but actually um it's going to be dependent on your case right on what you're looking for on what you're trying to um trying to do right on what answers that you're trying to get from chat gpt right every case has different um situations every case has you know different approach so i cannot really say there is like one standard rule that can be applied to like all cases so the more we practice um the more you're going to get used to it right so what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video we're going to talk about the capabilities of chat gpt so it is very important for you to know and understand things that chat gpt are capable of so you can utilize this ai tool to its fullest extent and see how far you can potentially go with chat gpt so uh, there are four things the first one is contextual awareness so chat gpt has the capability to maintain contextual awareness within a conversation uh, referencing past prompts or messages so if you go to chat gpt and you've you opened a new chat here as you guys can see um there are three main capabilities listed here the first one is remember what users say earlier in the conversation so that's exactly the same with uh contextual awareness so every single time you have conversations with chat gpt um actually you, you can refer to things that you've already said earlier in the past and chat gpt has the ability to recall that right so let's say you want to recall something that you've already said uh, previously feel free to do it chat gpt is able to do it and the second one is creative language language generation so chat gpt exhibits creativity in generating language and can produce novel and diverse responses it can go beyond more factual information and provide imaginative or nuanced answer if you don't believe me let's try it out generate me generate me fictional story about um old empire right so just an example uh i don't want the story to be very long so i'm just going to add short here short fictional story about old empire as you guys can see um you can prove how creative ChatGPT can potentially be right especially if you have like the right prompt you would be amazed knowing how creative chat gpt uh, can potentially be look at these guys all of these are fictional right so yeah um that's the second one the third one here um chat gpt allows user to provide follow-up corrections so let's say when you're having conversations with chat gpt sometimes um the output generated by chat gpt is not relevant to the topic or maybe it's taken out of the context so sometimes you want to make the corrections letting the chat gpt know hey actually um what i meant by 
this statement is this, right? Or maybe you want to take the conversation's uh, directions back to the original point, right? So it's not taken out of context. So yeah, ChatGPT is able to um, receive that feedback and then make corrections. All right, and then fourth one here is coherent responses. So ChatGPT can generate coherent and contextually relevant responses, providing meaningful answers and engaging in conversational interactions that make sense to the user. All right, so let's go back to the new chat here. Let's talk about the second capabilities listed here. So ChatGPT allows user to provide follow-up corrections, which is the same like this. And the third one here, um, ChatGPT is trained to decline inappropriate requests. So for example, if you are um, typing a prompt that is against ChatGPT uh, policy or terms and conditions, for example, um, you know, anything related to like violence or NSFW, right? Then most likely your prompt is going to be rejected and your request is not going to be processed, right? Because your prompt um, doesn't align or doesn't comply with ChatGPT um, terms and conditions. So yeah, um, so those are capabilities of ChatGPT, guys. Uh, in next video, we're going to talk about limitations of ChatGPT. So I'll see you guys there. Bye. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to talk about limitations of ChatGPT. Right. So as you guys know, uh, ChatGPT is actually pretty new AI technology. It was released in 2022, so it has been around five, six, or maybe seven months. I forget like the exact date when ChatGPT was released to the public, but I'm pretty sure um, it was like less than a year ago. So um, definitely ChatGPT is pretty new. So definitely ChatGPT is not perfect. There are still rooms for improvement. So yeah, we're going to talk about limitations of ChatGPT that you need to be aware of so you can set your expectations clear, right? And let's talk about the first one here, potential biases. So ChatGPT can in advertently generate biased or inappropriately responses due to bias present in its training data. It may reflect societal biases or produce responses that are offensive, harmful, and political bias. Um, to be honest with you, when it comes to like this uh, particular issue, potential biases, there is not much that we could do with that. Um, think about this. ChatGPT has a large pre-trained data set and if we're talking about pre-trained data set like the more data sets you have the better it is going to be right but also at the same time you need to realize that um, the larger the data set is um, the more bias it will potentially cause to right so um, that's just like the consequences that we all need to accept right that's uh, the first one. Let's talk about the second one here, limited knowledge of worlds and events after 2021. Uh, to be more specific, after September 2021. So the model training data only includes information up until that time. ChatGPT is trained on a large data sets, but its knowledge is based on information available prior to 2021. So if you go to ChatGPT and you open up uh, the new chat here, um, they also list like three main limitations. So as you guys can see here, limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. So all events occurred after 2021 might still be recorded in the pre-trained data set. However, um, you cannot expect ChatGPT to have very detailed information about those events after 2021, right? So just keep that in mind. All right, let's talk about the next one here, overconfidence responses. All right, so let's do the slideshow. So I'm just gonna click on slideshow. So ChatGPT may sometimes generate responses with a high level of confidence, even when the information provided is incorrect or inaccurate. So sometimes this can be quite challenging, especially people who rely completely on ChatGPT as their main source of information. Uh, I don't think it's very wise uh, thing to do you still need to do recheck to make sure um, the information is given, the information presented by ChatGPT is uh, factually correct, right? So yeah, um, sometimes the overconfidence tone um, 
make us convinced that whatever information given is um, correct although in some cases it can be um, incorrect too right or maybe not relevant to the context so yeah make sure that you do some extra checks and the last one here sensitivity to input phrasing so ChatGPT is highly sensitive to the phrasing and wording of prompts so even like small changes in input can lead to significantly different uh, responses and uh, it can make um, a little bit challenging to predict and control the model's behavior consistently all right so that's the challenge that we need to tackle that's the problem that we need to overcome and that's the reason why i always believe that prompt engineering is all about uh, designing prompt that is not only effective but also customizable meaning that even you make like some uh, modifications the output is still going to reflect to the original uh, purpose right so yeah um i think those are limitations of chat gpt that you need to be aware of uh, i think that's it that's all you need to know i'll see you guys in the next video we're going to talk about how to create effective chat gpt prompt so yeah i think that's it i'll see you guys in the next video What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to create effective ChatGPT prompts. So there are six aspects that you need to pay very close attention to. So the first one here, you need to be very clear and specific. So you need to create your prompts that provide clear instructions or ask specific questions to guide the model's response. Clearly define the desired outcome or the information that you are seeking to obtain to elicit more accurate and targeted responses all right always remember when you're communicating with chat gpt it is very crucial to make sure that chat gpt understands what you want and what you need all right so let's move on to the second one here set content and constraints provide relevant context or constraints in your prompts to guide the model's understanding specify any limitations requirements or boundaries to ensure the model generate responses within the desired scope or framework so actually it really depends on what type of output um, that you want to be generated by ChatGPT. If you want ChatGPT to be as creative as possible, you want ChatGPT to be as imaginative as possible, then you shouldn't have too many constraints. But if you want the output to be very specific, then make sure you add relevant context and constraints to your prompt, right? So yeah, that's the second one. Let's move on to the next one here. Um, use examples or demonstrate expected format consider providing examples or demonstrating the expected format for the desired responses this can help the model understand the structure and style you are seeking improving the chance of generating responses that meet your expectations so actually it really depends on what you're doing with chat gpt so if you're just asking uh, you know very basic questions then uh, most likely you won't need this but if you're asking ChatGPT to generate you a pretty complex template or maybe a pretty complex script for your uh, ad copy and you want the output to be exactly match your expectations, then obviously you will need to provide you know some examples uh, to let ChatGPT know, hey, actually this is my expected output, can you make it like this? All right, so that's number three. Let's move on to the next one here experiment with different phrasing so try to experiment with different phrasing or variations of prompts to explore how they influence the model responses small changes in wording can often lead to significantly different outputs so iterate and refine your prompts to achieve the desired outcome so i totally get it this is like the most annoying part uh, you're going to do a lot of trials and errors but um honestly if you are serious about learning prompt engineering that's what it takes to be expert at prompt engineering guys you need to be willing to spend some time doing trials and error to see okay we're getting closer to our goal so it seems that we need to add this right and the only way you can get better is by practicing more and more every day all right so that's number four let's move on to the next one here number five be mindful of length all right. so sometimes you're utilizing ChatGPT to generate you 
a pretty complex output um, and I totally get it guys sometimes you have a paragraph long prompt or maybe five six sentences of long prompts and it's totally fine right I'm not saying uh, anything wrong with that but it's going to be way better if you are willing to break down that complex prompt into like s smaller pieces into like more simple pieces so ChatGPT is going to be able to understand uh, better like what you actually want right and yeah that's uh, number five let's move on to the next one here emphasize your instructions and intentions right so sometimes when people are writing their prompts, they don't really specify what they want. They don't really specify um, the instructions. Hey, uh, ChatGPT, I want you to do this. I want you to, to do that, right? So sometimes they don't really uh, specify that part. And it's going to leave ambiguity and makes ChatGPT wonder, hey, actually, what you want me to do, right? So it's better for you to clearly emphasize your instructor or intentions in your prompt right make it very clear so ChatGPT is going to be able to understand what you actually want or maybe what output that you're seeking to get so yeah um that's all all right i'll see you guys in the next video what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video are uh, going to uh, talk about basic ChatGPT prompt structure all right so it's actually going to be a pretty short video I just want to make sure you understand the basic ChatGPT prompt structure, all right? So as you guys can see, I have a pretty cool screenshot here that I got from uh, ChatGPT. So who is better source to ask these questions than ChatGPT themselves, right? So yeah, I was asking this question. I was asking um, ChatGPT to generate me ChatGPT prompt structure, right? So who's the better source to answer this question? So yeah, give me basic uh, ChatGPT problem structure. As you guys can see, there are like three components. The first one is user message or input, right? So that's the input. For example, I want ChatGPT to generate me ad copy for my products. So my input will be, hey, ChatGPT generate me in generate me ad copy for my uh, dropshipping product, right? Just for example. And the second one here is system message or instructions. So depending on your prompt. Uh, sometimes you want to specify your instructions, right? In my case, uh, generate me ad copy, right? So that's definitely instruction to instruct ChatGPT to generate me that ad copy, right? So yeah, it's following the user message. You can include the system message or instructions to guide the model's behavior. Um, and the next one here, um, model response, uh, which is the output, right? So the model response is generated output from ChatGPT based on the user message and any preceding system messages. It represents the model's reply or response to the user inputs and continue the conversations. So um, as you guys can see, ChatGPT also provides me with a pretty cool example here. Here is an example to illustrate the basic structure. So the user, so this is the input. How does gravity work, right? So that's the equations. And in this example, the user initiates the conversations with the questions about gravity, All right? Cool. And this is the system. Gravity is a fundamental force that attracts objects with mass towards each other. It plays a crucial role that is shaping the motions. All right, so that's the message. And the system message, uh, which is the output, is this one. Gravity is explained with a, by the theory of general relativity, stuff like that. All right, so hopefully that's cleared that up. So, hey guys, that's uh, basic ChatGPT problem structure. Uh, it is very important for you to understand this. All right, I think that's it. Uh, that's all you need to know. Uh, that's what I told you, pretty short video. Just make it sure you understand um, the basic structure. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to uh, start learning how to use a ChatGPT prompt generator to automate uh, prompt creations. All right, so I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to utilize uh, some of these ChatGPT prompt generator tools, right? So we're going to learn how to uh, automate uh, ChatGPT prompt creations. So in this case, we're not going to write the ChatGPT prompt manually. Instead, we're going to utilize this prompt generator, right? So uh, let's go to the first one here, fusionai.world. So just click on it, it will take you here. As you guys can see, I'm now on Fusion AI. So yeah, just type what you want so let's say i want to generate a marketing campaign for 
uh, my product right so I'm just gonna type in the basic prompt and then once I click generate Fusion AI is going to generate me uh, like more complex prompt all right so marketing campaign for my products or maybe just marketing campaign right I'm just gonna make it as basic as possible and then click on um, generate from or maybe I'm gonna change this to add copy all right I'm just gonna click on generate and now uh, vision AI is going to generate me the prompt write a 500 word ad copy essay explaining the benefit of product including like features including the features focus on advantages and provide examples all right so I'm gonna copy and paste this to chat GPT right but before um before generating this prompt i'm gonna uh, make some changes i think 500 words is too long so i'm just gonna replace this with i guess 250 or maybe just 200 right and i want to be a little bit more specific i want the product to be related to sneaker Alright, so write a 200 word ad copy as I explaining the benefits of sneakers product including the features focus on the advantages and provide examples. Right, so we'll see what ChatGPT is capable of. Alright, so as you guys can see, introducing to the ultimate sneaker pro revolutions footwear that will change the way you walk, run, and conquer the world. Engineered with precision spec by Wow, okay, cool. Uh, very cool ad copy. I like it. Uh, I might not use like the whole thing here. I might just use like the first three paragraphs or first four paragraphs. I think it's, it's too long. But yeah, that's uh, amazing. Alright, so why don't we try one more thing here. Um, let's go back to our Fusion AI and I'm gonna change this. Um, this time I want Fusion AI to generate me um, prom for uh, my content, right? So fictional history story all right so i'm just gonna click generate and we'll see um what we're going to get here write a 500 word fictional history story exploring the culture and beliefs of a specific ancient civilizations including their impact on the world focus on the development of the civilizations and provide vivid descriptions wow that's pretty cool all right so i'm just gonna copy and paste that from all right i'm gonna Put it here, and obviously 500 words is too long. I'm just gonna um, replace that with 150 words. All right, and that's it. Just gonna hit enter and see what ChatGPT is capable of. We'll see. All right, in the heart of dense jungle, nestled between towering mountains, the ancient civilizations of Sepria tribe, known for their advanced knowledge of agriculture, astronomy, and architecture. All right. A uh, pretty creative, pretty um, cool fictional story here generated by ChatGPT. I like it so much. Yeah, so I think you should utilize Fusion AI, guys. Pretty powerful tool that you can uh, utilize to generate more complex problem from uh, basic problem like this, right? So yeah, um, that's just one of many prompt generators that you can uh, utilize. All right, so I think that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video. We're going to learn other ChatGPT prompt generators that we can uh, utilize to help us, you know, generating better output, all right? So I'll see you guys there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to utilize the second tool, which is FlowGPT. If you don't know how to get here, just go back to the slides and then click on this link, flowgpt.com, and it will take you here, all right? So as you guys can see, we are on FlowGPT. So welcome to FlowGPT. Um, this is a pretty cool uh, website, it's pretty cool technology that you can utilize to help you generating high quality prompt. And the way it works might be a little bit different compared to the previous tools that we learned, um, which was Vision AI. So in Vision AI, all you need to do is to type in the basic prompt and click generate prompt and then Vision AI is going to generate you like more complex prompt, right? But in Flow GPT, is a little bit different guys all you need to do is just to type in um, the topics of your prompt for example you want to do marketing 
just type in marketing like this and then click search and they have like many different models they have many different options that you can select so depending on your need depending on what you want um, they have let's say social media marketing campaign search they have create Facebook marketing um, I think this is for Facebook ads if you're planning to create Facebook ads then click on this content marketing booster um, cold email GPT marketing ideas right product marketing proposals marketing slogan generator so yeah you can select um, some of these models so let's say I want to um, select this marketing ideas because I want to get marketing ideas for my business just click on it as you guys can see here um, this is actually the prompt and you can feel free to customize um, these based on your need you can change uh, the company's or products name to your um, own company's name and you can also change the product descriptions right so feel free to customize this port and this is the prompt and then to run it just click send all right and cool as you guys can see um flow gpt has been fully integrated with chat gpt so you don't need to copy and paste the prompt here and then run the prompt on chat gpt instead just click send and then it will run the prompt for you here on flow gpt right so you don't need to copy and paste the prompt all right cool so now the output has been generated as you guys can see um they have like seven different uh, ideas for the marketing i'm just gonna scroll up really quick i don't know why it is so hard to scroll that up all right so the first one is content marketing through blogs and social media the second one is webinars and virtual products demos the third one is partnership with green energy advocates all right so yeah as you guys can see this uh prompt is able to generate you the seven marketing ideas so yeah pretty cool right so let's try another example let's say you want to uh, use this marketing slogan prompt right so as you guys can see uh, this is the prompt generate a series of marketing slogans that convey the unique selling points of your products or service and again kind of the same thing you can feel free to customize this right you can re replace this with your product's name your service name and also change the detail and then click send and and guess what uh ChatGPT is going to generate you um the output here right number one refreshment with benefit get more than just a hydration so all these um all these slogans are generate have been generated all right so if you want to scroll that up Uh, this was the prompt that was used to generate this output right so yeah um, that's how you do it guys if you're not really satisfied with the output that you got you might want to regenerate it just click on regenerate right so yeah let's try a different topic so we've already tried marketing why don't we try another topic for example you want to do um, content creation I'm just gonna type in content here right content search all right so I'm thinking like which one is uh, the best one to try here right or maybe I'm just gonna type in like content creations here or content ideas all right so I'm just gonna click content ideas all right cool so we got this one content ideas um, and optimization as you guys can see uh, they have like a pretty long uh, prompt here pretty long prompt uh, you will receive a range of innovative tiktok video ideas best practices for content creations and data driven strategies for optimizing your tiktok okay so uh, this prompt is specifically for uh, tiktok all right so if you own your tiktok account and you you might be stuck like you were thinking what ideas for your next content then you should use this prompt right then click send so as you guys can see now it is running the prompt and ChatGPT is going to generate you uh, multiple different output multiple different ideas for your content for your tiktok all right so educational content trendy challenge video behind the scenes humor skits dance videos keep it sure and sweet okay so they also share you know, like several different tips and tricks all right pretty cool just popular music time your post use analytics collaborate with other creators all right pretty cool um 
this is definitely a very comprehensive output where you get not only that you get the ideas for your content but you also get a few tips and tricks on how to uh, maximize your audience engagements on your TikTok. So pretty cool, right? All right, so uh, we've tried content creations. We have tried a marketing. Why don't we try uh, one more thing? Then we'll be done with this um, tool. So now let's try a uh, business, right? So I'm just gonna type in like business ideas and we'll see if there are prompts about business that we should try. So I'm just gonna click search. All right, so you have AI agencies, startup consultant, you have, um, what else? Disrupt AI under uncovering industries. I don't think we have uh, many options for this. I'm just gonna uh, change to another topic. So why don't we try uh, software development, right? So if you're a software engineer, you might want to um, utilize, you know, some of these prompts. So let's go to, Maybe I'm thinking about this one, Chrome extension. All right, so as you guys can see, uh, this is the prompt. Takes an idea for a Chrome extensions and brings it to life. Features expands on the user's idea, adding any necessary features, automatically code the extensions, debug code, update code, and file structure. All right, so guess what? This time we're going to be utilizing ChatGPT to generate us code for Chrome extension. So this is the prompt. And all we need to do is to click send. And now ChatGPT is going to run the prompt and ChatGPT is going to generate us um, the output, all right? So I'm curious what's the output going to be to be like. I'm um, pretty sure it's going to be like a code or you know anything related to our Chrome extensions, but again, due to complexity of this request, it might take a while, right? That's the reason why it takes a little bit longer to load, you know? So uh, yeah, guys, just be patient. Uh, based on my personal experience, every single time you use uh, ChatGPT to generate your code, uh, it will take a little bit longer than usual, right? All right, cool. So Chrome extension AI, hello. Before we start, please remember to vote um, for this submission for the S2 Flow GPT contest. Now, please provide me with your Chrome extension ideas. All right, so now uh, we need to uh, provide them the ideas. So I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about um, like screenshot uh, Chrome extension. So you're able to do like screenshot, but for the whole pages. Right, so I'm just gonna type that in Chrome extensions for screenshot screenshotting the whole pages, the whole page. Right, so I'm just gonna hit enter. All right, cool. So now it is loading. All right, so we'll see. Chrome extensions AI, great idea. Let's ex ban on that. Do you have any specific features in mind that you would like to be included in the extensions? No. Um, just go with your suggestion. All right, so that's going to be my reply, right? Okay, cool. So now um, the chat GPT is generating us a uh, more uh, details about the features, Chrome extensions AI. All right, here is a list of features that could be included in the extensions. Um, options to capture the entire web page, options to save the screenshot, options to annotate the screenshots with text lines, arrows, and shapes, options to share the screenshot via emails, social media, or cloud storage, options to schedule periodic screenshots of a web page. Why do you think of these features? Is there anything you you'd like to add or remove? Well, I think I'm pretty satisfied with those. So I'm just gonna reply like this. Sounds good. All right. So now ChatGPT is going to generate us a more detailed 
more detailed descriptions about our Chrome extensions. So yeah, guys, that's how you guys use it. All right, I think uh, that's it. There are like many different um, topics that you can choose. If you go to collections, just click on collections here. As you guys can see, there are like many different uh, options that you guys can choose. Social media, Lincoln, uh, what else? Uh, JPEG, I'm not really familiar with this to be honest with you. But there are like many different topics that you can choose. Um, academics, engineering, marketing, uh, startup, right? Many different um, topics. All right, so I think that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to learn how to uh, utilize another tool, another prompt generator. So I'll see you guys there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to uh, utilize another prompt generator tool which is cookup.ai. So if you don't know how to get here, just go back to the slides and then click on cookup.ai and it will take you here. All right, so as you guys can see, we are now on cookup.ai. So welcome to cookup.ai. Um, this tool is extremely similar to the previous tool that we learned, which was uh, flowgpt.com, where you have many different options to select. So for example, you want to run ads, just click on ads and then click on this arrow just click on it as you guys can see you have uh, many different um, options you have free instagram ads copy generator you have free google ads headline generator free tiktok ads keyword generator free tiktok ads headline generator so yeah you have many different options to choose so let's say i want to run ads on tiktok right and i want to you know get um headlines for my tiktok ads so just gonna click on try now as you guys can see here i will need to enter my product name so let's say i'm selling pillow so i'm just gonna enter a uh, pillow or maybe i need to be a little bit more specific uh so i'm just gonna name it as soft pillow like this all right so this is going to be my product name and as you guys can see this is actually the prompt that will be used create eye-catching headlines for tiktok ads and the last thing that I need to do here is just to click this button, generate results. All right. So now I'm generating the result. All right. So just wait and see what we're going to get. Okay, cool. So um, I have like five different headlines, snooze in style with snuggle clothes, dream nights with dream night starts with softy pillow, the corny fest slip with Cloth cloth. All right, so uh, pretty cool. So these are the outputs that you got. Let's say we want to try uh, another thing. So let's go back to the apps, all right? Or just go back to home. And let's say we want to try um, something else, right? We already tried um, the prop for ads, for running ads. You have like many different options here, guys. So just just explore um let's say this time we want to try um predictions i'm thinking about like market or yeah maybe cryptocurrency market or stock market i don't know yet so just click predictions and click on predictions click on the arrow oh actually it has nothing to do with um market predictions so you have like new year resolutions generator right uh, next text using ai generate rap song for twitter profile um to be honest with you i don't think this is very interesting to try so let's try something else let's say we go with um blogging right so i'm interested in blogging so click on blogging you have several different options here free blog post topic ideas generator free blog title generator so why don't we try the first one free blog post uh, topic ideas generator right all right so we need to um describe the topic so let's say you want it to be uh, fictional history right fictional history something like this and just click on generate all right and before clicking on generate result, you might want to see this frequently asked questions. All right. And um, just click generate and see what we're going to get here. 
histofictive uh, fictal history, okay, very cool. Um, narrative past, imaginary timelines, fantastical chronicles. Yeah, so that's how you use uh, this tool, guys. That's how you uh, utilize cookup.ai. Let's say we want to try uh, one more thing before um, ending this video. So just click on email and just click on this arrow. All right, so as you guys can see, uh, you have like many different prompts for email. Let's say we want to uh, create fundraising email. Um, so just click on this. And this is actually the prompt that will be used, create effective uh, fundraising emails quickly and easily, right? So we also need to uh, describe the email tone. Uh, maybe uh, the fundraising is going to be for our uh, charity project. So I'm just gonna type in charity project and I'm gonna click generate results and now ChatGPT is going to generate us um, the fundraising email uh, template I guess so we'll see what we're going to get here right I don't know what to expect here right so I think this is pretty short prompt right All right, so it is still generating. I don't know why it takes so long. Um, usually it doesn't take this long. All right, cool. Now, as you guys can see, uh, we have this uh, email template. So you can feel free to customize this um, email there on a donor's name to so just replace this with your actual donor's name. And you might want to uh, add some minor modifications to this um, email body and also change this with your own name and change this with your own organizations or maybe company whatever yeah so that's how you utilize this tool guys i think that's it that's all you need to know i'll see you guys in the next video we're going to learn another tool another prompt generator all right i'll see you guys there what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video we're going to learn another prompt generator called hall analysis so if you don't know how to get there just click on this link hallanalysis.com slash chatgpt prompts generator and it will take you here so welcome to hall analysis so this tool might be a little bit different compared to the previous one so this tool concentrates mainly on uh, three things here write something code something and learn something so let's say you want to write articles you can select this you or a software engineer you want to code a project click on code something or you maybe you are a student you want to learn just click learn something all right so let's try this out so let's say we want to write an article right or maybe you want to write a marketing copy or product descriptions or maybe email right i don't know which one to choose maybe we're going to try product descriptions right just just like this and the main topic uh we want chat gpt to describe uh our product and our product is uh, maybe sneakers, right? So I'm just gonna type in athletic wear athletic sneakers or maybe not maybe casual casual sneakers like this right and subtopics I'm just gonna type like very basic thing here a uh, sneaker that is very comfortable to use Right, that's it and for this sections use those writing styles narrative descriptive persuasive expository creative i want it to be descriptive right because the product description should be descriptive describing about the pro the product right in this tone um formal informal optimistic worried friendly uh, curious assertive encouraging surprised and cooperative actually i want it to be um a little bit informal because you know the product is casual sneaker so I want it to be casual uh, include this keyword so maybe I want to include um, convertible uh, sneakers that's it exclude this keyword so this is like negative prompt if you want um, things to be excluded from your prompt then add it here but I don't think so I'm not gonna add anything to this uh, sections rate reading grade level um actually you can choose a uh, reading grade level like the higher uh, you go the more complex vocabularies will be used 
so I want my product descriptions to be able to be understood by you know a lot of people so I'm just gonna go with um, grade 6 right so they're not going to use very complex vocabularies or very uh, complex uh, idea required word count so I don't want I don't want it to be very long so I'm just gonna stick with let's say 150 words that's it or maybe not maybe I'm just gonna stick with um, 100 words right I don't want it to be very long all right cool so if you scroll back up as you guys can see um, this is our prompt right you can copy this and then you can paste this on chat GPT and you can run it all right, cool. So introducing our awesome casual sneaker, the epitome of cozy comfort gear for your fit. This kicks or must have for all sneakers lovers out there. Flip your fit into pure bliss as you enjoy the cushion heaven provided by these ultra comfy shoes. All right, pretty cool, right? So yeah, um, that's how you utilize hull analysis. Let's say you want to try something else. So click on some code something. And this time we're going to choose uh, Python, I guess, or maybe C++, I don't know yet. I'm going to go with Python. What should the code do, right? So we're going to give the instructions. Uh, what is the code going to do, right? So actually, uh, I just want to create a basic mathematics game, all right? Basic mathematics game. That's it. Include comments. So if you want your code to have, you know, additional documentations explaining what its line of code does, then you might want to check this, but I don't think I'm going to check this. I'm just gonna uh, uncheck this, right? So that's it. As you guys can see, uh, this is the prompt that we're going to use. Um, write some codes that uses Python to do the following tasks. Basic mathematics games include code comments that explain the code. All right. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it here. All right, cool. So now ChatGPT is going to generate us the code. Look at this, amazing, right? Import random. Um, they have generate questions. So that's the first functions. Yeah, pretty basic uh, subtractions, additions, multiplications, and division game, I guess. Very simple mathematics game. Oh, actually, they also add like some documentations explaining what its uh, functions does. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, guys. That's how you uh, utilize whole analysis to uh, create a prompt for you. So I think that's it. That's all you need to know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to utilize another prompt generator tool called Prompt Vibes. If you don't know how to get here, just go back to the slides and then click on this um, link, and it will take you here to Prompt Vibes. And you can enter your email and then click subscribe if you want to get like the latest news from this platform. And as you guys can see, there are like many different uh, topics. There are many different categories that you can choose. You have chat GPT, jailbreaks, cutting prompts, design, play game, productivity, role play, writing prompts, marketing prompts. Uh, what else? New prompt. You have uh, funny prompts. So let's say uh, we're a business owner, right? And 30% or 40% of our energy will be allocated to marketing right so let's try marketing prompts okay cool so um as you guys can see there are many different options that we can choose we have product market fit we have multi-dimensional social media content generator prompt uh, customer research uh, ultimate chat gpt marketer what else for people who write emails advertisers youtube content scripters uh, social media copywriting um, what else you have like many different options here influencer Facebook ads manager All right, so let's say we want to run our Facebook ads Why don't we why don't we try this one though? Um, just click on it influencer Facebook ads manager and As you guys can see uh, this is the prompt. I need the Facebook ad copy that will engage my ideal customer personal with specific type of content from influencer type who can authentically share the benefits of my product service and encourage them to make a purchase right so yeah um you actually can customize this prompt i'm sorry i'm just gonna close that so we're just going to copy and paste this to chat gpt and we're going to customize this based on our case right 
So I need the Facebook ad copy that will engage my ideal customer personal. So this will be your main targeted customer. So I'm just gonna type in teens, teenagers, right? With specific type of content, um, maybe prank. Cause I think younger generations like, you know, watching prank videos from influencer type. Um, maybe, um, you know, YouTuber who specialize in pranking people. So prank specialists, I think that would be great. Who can authentically share the benefits of my product or service. Uh, in this case, my product is going to be what I'm thinking about um, T-shirt, right? So I'm just gonna type in T-shirt and encourage them to make a purchase. So I'm just gonna hit run and see what ChatGPT is going to generate us. Unless your prankster sides with our epic T-shirt. I know uh, prank and T-shirt is not very related, but this is just for an example, right? I'm just uh, showing you how to customize this prompt for your own uh, product for your own uh, need. Uh, hey teens, are you ready to take your pranks to a whole new level? Introducing our jaw-droppingly awesome prank specialist t-shirt designed by prankster for pranksters. Our t-shirt is not just an any ordinary piece of clothing. It is a secret weapon that will level up your pranking game. All right, so that's a uh, pretty cool um, ad copy for your Facebook ads campaign. Um, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. Uh, definitely a pretty cool emojis here. You have uh, cool t-shirt emojis. Um, what else? This um, loving face, I guess. Yeah, you have a pretty cool uh, ad copy here, right? So yeah, I think that's it. That's all you need to know about uh, Prom Vibes. Uh, obviously, you should spend some time here uh, exploring many different um, categories on Prom Vibes. Right, so I'm just showing you how to uh, utilize this to generate your prom for Facebook ads specifically. But again, there are many different options that you should explore. All right, so I think that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn the differences between zero shot, few shot, and chain of thought. So those three are uh, the main types of prompting. So let's begin with the first one here: zero shot prompting. Well, it is a technique where a language model is able to generate responses to prompt it has never been explicitly trained on. It achieves this by understanding the general context and structure of the prompt, allowing it to generate coherent and relevant responses. So when it comes to zero prompting, um, there is no need for us to provide uh, examples, right? So all we need to do is just to um, set the equations or the instructions and ChatGPT is going to answer it without us having to provide them examples. So let me give you an example here. Um, let's see, I want to ask what is the color of a moon, all right? So what is the color of moon, all right? So I'm just going to ask these questions. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to answer these questions. And guess what? I don't provide any examples here, right? And we'll see. The color of the moon appears to be mostly gray or white. Okay, as you guys can see, now ChatGPT is generating us the answer to that equations, right? And the answer is pretty complex like this. Meanwhile, the equations or the prompt was extremely short. So we didn't provide any examples. We didn't uh, tell ChatGPT what we expected. We only asked these questions, right? So that's called uh, zero shot prompting. And let's talk about the next one here, um, few shot prompting. So few shot prompting takes the concept further by training the model on a limited number of examples related to a specific prompt, enhancing its ability to generate accurate responses with the domain. So in other words, when it comes to few shot prompting, we uh, kind of train the JetGPT model first. And you might be wondering like how to train it? Do we need to code? No, we only, only need to provide um, few examples or maybe just let JetGPT know what is our expected output, right? So for example, I sell sneakers and I want to create ad copy. So I'm gonna utilize ChatGPT to generate me ad copy for my sneaker products or maybe product descriptions um, for my sneakers, all right? And instead of just writing, um, hey, generate me ad copy for my sneaker, because that's going to be considered as zero shot prom, right? 
But this time, since we are going to make an example for a few short prompts, we will need to provide um, an example regarding what is going to be our expected output. So ChatGPT will understand, okay, this is what you want, right? So yeah, I'm gonna create the prompt. Can you generate me ad copy for my sneakers, sneaker products um, with the same structure as, maybe I'm gonna pick this ad copy. Um, All right, so I'm gonna paste this here, right? So guess what? In this case, in this particular case, um, we're providing examples to ChatGPT. So we are actually doing you know, some training to um, GPT models. Hey, uh, actually I want your response, I want your output to have the same structure like this, All right? So that's what we usually call as few shot prompt. All right, cool. So now ChatGPT is going to generate us um, the ad copy or a product descriptions, whatever you wanna call it. I know those two are totally different things, but yeah, um, as you guys can see, now ChatGPT has generated us an ad copy for our sneaker products with the same structure as this, all right? Introducing our latest sneakers collections where timeless elegance meets runway uh, inspirations. Yeah, so that's how you guys do it. And you might be wondering like, hey, uh, when should I use zero shot prompt? When should I use um, few shot prompt? Well, it really depends on what you're doing. It really depends on what is your expected uh, output, right? So if you're um, if you are planning to use ChatGPT to generate you a very complex um, template or maybe a very complex um, concepts, then I really recommend you to go with the few shot prompts because it's going to be better if you train the model first uh, to at least understand like what you want. But if you want ChatGPT to, to generate you ideas, uh, generate you a new ideas, then I would recommend you to go with the zero shot prompt because when you don't provide any examples to ChatGPT, actually that can be a good thing because um, you're not limiting ChatGPT creativity, right? You're not providing an example, so ChatGPT can uh, freely think without having to be restricted to you know particular um, constraint. So yeah, uh, so that's it for a few short prompts. Let's move on to the last one here, chain of thoughts. So chain of thoughts refers to the ability of language models to maintain coherent and logical progressions in a conversations by understanding and referencing prior context and informations allowing for more engaging and natural interactions. So yeah, when you're having conversations with ChatGPT, let me give you an example. Um, it can be uh, continuous conversations, right? You ask questions and ChatGPT replied um, to your questions and you can ask another questions or ask questions related to the previous questions and ChatGPT is going to provide you with more and more answers. So let me show you how it works. So let's see. Um, I want ChatGPT to generate me ideas for my e-commerce business. Generate me ideas for my e-commerce business. All right, so now ChatGPT is going to generate me ideas. We have one, uh, needs product selections, personalized recommendations, subscription box, service, user generated content, social media, influencer, Right, cool. So actually, I'm um, kind of interested in uh, user-generated content. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. And I'm gonna tell ChatGPT I am interested in user-generated content. So would you please um, tell me how to start? Right, so now ChatGPT is going to tell us step-by-step uh, -step on how to start user-generated content or UGC business, right? Although this is not very related to e-commerce, um, although this is not um, very related to our original questions, but that's completely fine, right? As you guys can see, this is how for um, the directions of conversations 
can potentially be uh, moved right so yeah um define your goals choose the right platform create the branded hashtags run contests or giveaways so as you guys can see this is like continuous conversations right i ask questions ChatGPT answer that questions and then i ask another questions related to uh, ChatGPT's answer and ChatGPT replies me back so yeah that's um that's the examples of chain of thoughts right so yeah those are three um different types of prompts for ChatGPT. Uh, i think that's it that's all you need to know i'll see you guys in the What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to start implementing all knowledge and skills that we've learned prior to this fully guided project. So as you guys can see, there are eight categories. The first one is business and entrepreneurship. The second one is copywriting. The third one is programming. The fourth one is content creations. The fifth one here is resume, CV. The sixth one is market research uh, and learning languages. And the last one is ML template. All right, so it is fully guided projects. We're going to write and design ChatGPT prompts. Not only that, we're also going to build a project um, for its category, all right? And if I make one video for all of these, it's going to be a very long video. So I decided to uh, create two videos for its um, sections or its um, category, all right? So we're going to have two videos for business and entrepreneurship. We're going to have two videos for copywriting. So that's how it works, guys. All right, so let's get started in this video. We're going to be concentrating on business and entrepreneurship. All right, so let's go to um, prom vibes. As you guys can see, uh, I have prom vibes open here. I have Flow GPT and also uh, Cook Up AI. So those three tools are uh, tools that we're going to be utilizing for business category. All right, and guess what? Actually, I already have a hundred uh, prompts for business and entrepreneurship on this Google Docs and I'm going to download this and then upload it on Udemy resource folder and then you can use this, right? So look at this. I'm just going to download this as PDF and also uh, give it to you in the Udemy resource folder, right? But for now, we're not going to use this. We're going to use uh, these three tools instead. So let's get started. Let's go with Flow GPT. Let's say we want to type in business here because we want to get all prompts related to business. All right, so here we go. The first thing that you need to do when you are starting a business, you need to find ideas, right? All right, so why don't we um, use the prompt to generate us business ideas? So I'm just gonna uh, control F like this. If you're on Mac then just do command F and I'm gonna type in ideas like this all right all right so you have this one uh, generate digital startup ideas uh, business creator business generator can bring your ideas to life uh, what else we have this one digital startup ideas generator so if you have many uh, different options here if you don't like one of them you still can try other options too right so yeah let's get um started all right so i'm gonna pick this one first digital startup ideas generator i'm gonna click on it and as you guys can see this is the prompt generate digital startup ideas based on people's wishes complete with business plan and idea validation step all right so i'm just gonna click send or you can also feel, feel free to customize this based on your need, based on your uh, inspirations or ideas. But I'm I'm gonna stick with this default template. So I'm just gonna click send, and we'll see what uh, Flow GPT is going to generate us. As you guys can see here, you don't need to copy and paste the prompt to ChatGPT, since Flow GPT has actually been integrated with ChatGPT. So you can run the prompt here on Flow GPT. All right, now it's still loading. So just uh, be patient, guys, and wait. Um, still loading all right I don't know why it takes so long usually it doesn't take this long all right there was an error from the server so I'm just gonna uh, regenerate it again I don't know reason why I apologize guys so let's do it again all right so I'm gonna click send all right cool I did name one liner a demo app an app that connects a small town all right so i'm just gonna let it finish first 
All right, so I'm just gonna wait. Okay, cool. So now um, it has been generated. So we'll see what output that we got here. Uh, pretty cool stuff here, obviously. I'm going to scroll this up really quick. I'm gonna scroll up all the way to the bottom. Okay, all the way to the top. All right. So the first one here is One Liner, the mall app, an app that connects a small town resident to local stores and services, creating a virtual mall or experience. Pretty cool. The second one here is Target User Persona, a small town resident who desire a mall experience but lack access due to locations. Right, so what this um, actually does is to provide you with ideas, business ideas that solve people's problem, right? So every single time you want to create business, obviously you need to check if that business is in high demand in the market or in other words, people actually need it. Because if people don't need it or there is no demand in the market, then obviously that business is going to fail, right? So yeah, uh, obviously you can uh, use this problem to give you some business ideas and among these business ideas just find one that you like and you might want to consider to start that business right so yeah this is a pretty good problem definitely why don't we try another problem right so I'm thinking about um, trying this one um, where is it so I'm gonna control F and then uh, type in ideas All right, so why don't we try this one, right? This is um, kind of similar to the previous um, digital startup business ideas generator. All right, so as you guys can see, this is the problem. For example, when I say, I wish there is a big large small in the small town, you generate a business plan for the digital startup complete with the idea name. All right, so yeah, you might want to try this one. So I'm just gonna click send. All right, so now it is generating um, the output uh, just wait hopefully it doesn't take too long all right so now it's generating it really seems that it really seems that the output is kind of similar to the previous one right so you have one liner okay so the creator of this prompt is strong die form that's his name I'm gonna check if actually um, the one that created like the prompt that we tried previously was also the same guy. Okay, so it really seems he's a different guy. So uh, that's completely fine. Let's go back to our uh, prompt that we tried. Just gonna click send. All right, so even though the problem is different, but it really seems that the output that we got here is extremely similar, similar, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, so these are the business ideas that you should uh, consider, right? So yeah, guys, that's how you uh, utilize ChatGPT to generate you uh, business ideas, all right? You might want to try like different um, platform. You might want to try um, different uh, tool you can do it too. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to uh, generate business plans using ChatGPT. So in the previous video, we already learned how to uh, generate business ideas using the right prompt. All right, so once you got the ideas and select one that you want to start, then obviously it's going to be very helpful if you have the business plan so you know uh, what's going to be the next step that you will need to do to start your business right or to make your dream into reality so as you guys can see um, right now we are still on uh, flow GPT so we're going to stick to this platform for the business category and we're going to choose this one business creator right I'm gonna click on it as you guys can see this is the prompt you might want to customize this but I'm just gonna stick with uh, this prompt, I'm gonna click send. All right, so now ChatGPT is going to generate its response. All right, pretty cool uh, avatar here. Hello, I'm a business creator, a highly developed AI that can help you bring any business idea to life or business creator life into your business. I will ask you some questions. All right, so don't worry if you don't know the answer for questions, you can skip it 
and go to the next uh, let's begin what's your current budget for this business venture and you have to and do you have access to additional funding all right so i'm just gonna tell him like hey uh, my budget is my current budget is um maybe 10k yeah 10k all right ten thousand dollars all right so we'll see what is going to be the following response great with a budget of 10k we can explore a range of business ideas do you have any specific business ideas in mind that you want to pursue i'm um, thinking about thinking about uh, print on demand business can you generate me the plan All right, so we'll see what we're going to get. Certainly, a print-on-demand business can be a great idea with relatively low startup costs. Let's dive into the details. All right, cool. So, um, can you imagine like how detailed um uh, the the output given by ChatGPT? So let me scroll down really quick here to show you. So. Uh, ChatGPT gave like the name ideas, the descriptions about the business, the ideas for the product, for the print on demand product, advice, uh, startup costs. So as you guys can see, this is like the breakdown of the startup costs. And if you scroll down, you can also see like the step-by-step -step guide, which is like the business plan, like list of things that we need to do, research the market demand and competitions, identify your target audience, choose your Choose a platform for selling your products, maybe Shopify, WooCommerce, or even Etsy. Uh, provide a new idea. What else? External resources. So it's very complete business plan, guys. Yeah, so I think using this prompt, using this uh, prompt created by uh, this guy named KK. Um, not really sure if I pronounced that correctly. But if you uh, utilize this prompt to help you generating business plan, it's going to be very beneficial. Because the response that you got from ChatGPT is very complete. Not only that, you also got you know other informations related to your uh, business. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, one of many ways that you can do to generate business plan. Obviously, there are like many other prompts that you should try. Um, but among others, I think this is like the best one that I found so far. So yeah, I think that's that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to learn how to uh, write ChatGPT prompts for uh, copywriting or marketing. Right? I'm gonna add this marketing. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn um, the next topic, which is copywriting and marketing. Right? So we're going to learn uh, prompt engineering. Uh, specifically for copywriting and marketing all right so we're going to use this tool called hell analysis and make sure that you select this one marketing copy and for the main topic just enter um, any products that you want to advertise for example i want to advertise my uh, chocolate or my chocolate bar something like this right so i'm selling chocolate bar right so yeah, um, that's going to be my product. And for the subtopics, if you want to add any, just feel free to add you know any uh, additional descriptions or specifications about your product that you're selling. But for me, I'm just going to leave this empty, all right? Um, use this writing styles. You have several different um, options, narrative, descriptive, persuasive, expository, or creative. Well, since this is going to be ad copy, so I'm going to go with uh, persuasive because I want uh, the tone to be uh, convincing the customers or the potential customers to purchase my product, right? And the next one here, right in this tone, uh, formal, informal, optimistic, worried, friendly, curious, assertive, encouraging, surprised, cooperative. I think it's going to be better if we write it in this style, uh, encouraging style. We want to encourage them to buy. And also include this keyword. Um, it's going to be delicious, uh, healthy. Uh, what else? Less sugar. 
you know, just add all um, keywords related to your uh, products that you're selling. What else? Delicious, healthy, less eager, chocolate. And maybe that's it. Or maybe I'm going to add one more uh, keyword. It's going to be cheap, right? Okay, so exclude this keyword. So if there are some keywords that you want to be excluded, then make sure that you add it here, but I don't want to. So I'm just going to uh, leave this blank. Uh, reading grade level. Uh, I think I don't want ChatGPT to use very complex vocabularies, right? I want my ad copy to be able to reach uh, as many audience as possible. So obviously I'm going to stick with grade three or maybe grade five, right? Makes, making sure... Um, all people can understand um, the ad copy here, right? Record word con. Um, well, for ad copy, I don't want it to be very long because when you have very long ad copy, it's not going to be very effective because people are lazy to read like the whole thing. So I'm just gonna have maybe uh, 50 words and that's it. So let's scroll back up and this is going to be the prompt, right? So I'm just gonna copy this from and then I'm gonna click OK. And I'm just going to paste it here, right? So this is going to be uh, the prompt. All right, cool. So let's see what ChatGPT is going to generate us. Pretty cool. Indulge in the gold-free pleasure of our delicious chocolate bars, savor the rates of healthy taste that will satisfy your cravings without comprising, compromising your health goals, right? With less sugar and wholesome ingredients, it is the perfect treat for a gold-free Indulgence plus our affordable price make it a sweet deal. All right, very cool. Right, so now why don't we try another tool? So this time we're going to utilize Flow GPT to generate as ad copy, but specifically for Google Ads. All right, so I'm pretty sure like lots of you are uh, using Google Ads to advertise your products or your services. Then I'm gonna teach you step by step on how to uh, utilize this prompt generator. Right, so you just select one of these. Um, I'm gonna go with the first one here, Google Ads at copy. So I'm just gonna select that. As you guys can see, this is the prompt. Uh, definitely pretty long prompt. So this prompt presents an opportunities to work uh, with a skilled Google Ads copywriter. As a user, you can provide the copywriter with a set of keywords that I intend to use for my Google Ads campaign. It will create eye catching and concise headlines, description tailored to your keywords. All right, so let's uh, click send. So we're going to run this prompt and see what we're going to get. All right, cool. Now it is still loading, so please be patient. While waiting, I'm um, just going to inform you that uh, the same thing with the previous category. Um, I also provide you with 100 uh, chat GPT prompts for copywriting and marketing here in Google Docs. So I'm going to download this as PDF and I'm going to upload it on Udemy resource folder so you can access this beautiful 100 prompts for copywriting and marketing, right? Okay, cool. So now uh, ChatGPT has generated us the uh, output as you guys can see. So great. Please provide me with a set of keywords for your Google Ads. All right, so now it is still generating so we cannot type it. All right, so it is still generating. I'm just gonna click regenerate. Um, for some reason there was an error, so I really apologize for that. I'm just gonna click regenerate. All right, so now it is regenerating the response. All right, so great. What set of keywords would you like to add would you like to use for your Google ads? Well, assuming we are still advertising like the same exact product that we did uh, previously. So I'm going to advertise my chocolate bar. Chocolate bar, uh, what else? Uh, cheap, or maybe just uh, less sugar. Less sugar, dialysis, and healthy. All right, so those are four main keywords that will be used for the Google ads uh, campaign, all right? Okay, cool. So now, as you guys can see, um, ChatGPT is uh, generating like the next um, 
response. We'll see what we're going to get here, right? Right, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. It's still loading. I really apologize guys if it takes too long. Um, if it is too long then I might just skip this part and we'll return once the process is done because I don't want the video to be super long. Oh, actually it's done. All right, here are three headlines for your Google Ads. Cool, sweet, healthy, less sugar and chocolate water. Satisfied with your cravings, healthy, chocolate, sinless, delight, delicious, less sugar. All right, so what would you like me to do next? Rewrite headlines, shorten headlines, or continue? Well, um, since I'm satisfied with these three headlines, I'm going to continue. So I'm gonna uh, click, I'm gonna enter C, all right? Great, here are two descriptions for your Google Ads. Indulge in a scrumptious uh, chocolate with less sugar and added health benefits. The second one is deliciousness redefined. Bitter into healthier chocolate bar with less sugar. What would you like? Me to do next. Free write descriptions, shorten descriptions, continue further. Well, I think I'm pretty satisfied too with these two descriptions, so I'm gonna continue. But again, if you're not really satisfied with uh, the output that you got, you might want to regenerate it. So just uh, enter A or B. Great. Do, ha do you have another set of keywords you would like to use for your Google Ads, or shall I come up with a new set? All right, so we'll see uh, the creativity of ChatGPT. So I'm going to let ChatGPT know that uh, they should uh, come up with their uh, new set of keywords, right? So that's going to be my reply. You shall come up with your new set, all right? So we'll see what we're going to get here, right? I'm so excited. Great, here are three new keywords. Yoga mats, non-slip, comfortable, durable. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's how it works, guys, all right? So that's how you uh, utilize this Google Ads ad copy generations uh, tool to help you generating uh, high quality and effective um, ad copy for your Google Ads campaign. All right, so that's how it works. Um, I think that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to still talk about marketing, but we're going to see it from different approach. All right, so I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to generate um, marketing strategies using ChatGPT. So in the previous video, we already learned uh, from engineering for uh, generating ad copy for our marketing campaign, but having high quality ad copy is not enough. We need to have effective marketing strategies, right? So um, we're going to utilize Flow GPT this time, and we're going to select um, this one, creating marketing strategy. Uh, but actually, you also have other options. You might also want to try this out, marketing genius challenge, right? Or maybe this one, creating a marketing plan. So there are like many different prompts available here, right? Um, just pick the one that you like the most, or maybe if you don't know yet, like which one hit you like the most, it's going to be better if you try every single one of them. It's going to take a lot of time, but at the end of the day, it's going to be worth it because you're going to know, hey, this is actually the best model. And guess what? Uh, this will be the problem that I will rely upon. So let's try this one first, creating a marketing strategy. As you guys can see, they have a very uh, long prompt here. Write out marketing strategy for a new startup that is selling um, so this is the part that you should remove and then uh, replace this part with your own product or your own service, all right? So you should customize this based on your need. I have about mm -hmm. available budget. So you need to replace this with your own budget, your current budget that is available for the business, right? And you also need to replace this part. Marketing goal include uh, increasing sales, improving uh, brand awareness with your own goal. Obviously, every business uh, has different goal. Uh, whether you want to focus on brand awareness or you want to focus on generating more sales, it's totally, totally up to you, right? And you also need to set up your target audience. Okay, cool. So um, 
we're just going to uh, customize this based on our product, right? So let's say I am selling chocolate bar, right? So to be consistent, we're just going to stick with that one product, right? So I don't want to confuse you. Chocolate bar, available budget, $2 trillion. Obviously, I don't have that much money. I wouldn't be here if I have $2 trillion, guys. So I'm just gonna um, go with maybe $5,000. Yeah, just $5,000, right? Or maybe that's two months. I'm gonna stick with $1,000, right? Marketing goal. I want to generate uh, more sales, in, um, increasing sales, that's it. And the target audience, right? Obviously, I want um, the ad to reach as many people as possible, but at the same time, it is very crucial for us to be realistic uh, with only $1,000 budget like you cannot expect to reach a million people at once that's just impossible to happen right that's unrealistic completely unrealistic so i'm gonna stick with uh you know free realistic number so maybe it's uh fifteen thousand uh fifteen thousand uh chocolate lovers that's it and i'm gonna click send and now chat gpt is going to generate as the prompt I'm sorry, not the problem, but the output or the marketing strategies to be more specific. So, all right, cool. So as you guys can see, ChatGPT is generating, generating us the marketing strategies. Um, so it divided into like several different points here. Um, right, cool. Very cool, very cool. All right, so I'm gonna scroll up and see what ChatGPT is generating us. So the first one here, uh, marketing strategy for a chocolate bar. Uh, social media marketing. Create a social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right. And the second one is influencer marketing. And the third one here is content marketing. All right. So there are like many different types of marketing that we should try. The fourth one is email marketing. The fifth one here is local marketing. And wow, that's so beautiful. So GVD even breaks down um, the estimated return for its um marketing model so for example like social media marketing can uh, give you return of eight hundred dollars uh influencer marketing can give you return of one thousand dollars but before going to this table we need to understand how much money that we're going to spend for um its marketing model right so you can see okay so um the roi percentage makes sense and it's worth to try so yeah that's uh one of many uh examples that you can do for you know finding marketing strategies for your business if you want to try you know other models other prompts feel free to do it right so i think that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next video bye what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video we're going to learn uh prompt engineering for programming which is the third category here all right so um, this time we're going to utilize whole analysis to generate us um, the problem. So as you guys can see, right now I'm on whole analysis. And the first thing that you need to do is to switch from write something to code something, right? And in the first section here, which language should be used? Uh, feel free to pick any programming language that you want. But me, I'm going to go with Python, right? What should the code do? So feel free to type down the project, uh, describe your project. Um, so actually this time I'm going to ask ChatGPT to generate me the code for um, rock, scissor, and paper game. So I'm just gonna type it down here. Um, rock, scissor, paper, game. Right, so that's what I want to build. And if you want ChatGPT to include cut comments that explain the code, um, just check this, right? So when you check this, um, ChatGPT is going to provide you with additional documentations explaining what its line of code does. All right, and I think that's it. I'm just gonna copy this prompt. All right, and just go to our uh, ChatGPT. I'm gonna close this first. All right, so here we go. I'm um, just gonna copy and paste that prompt. 
write code that uses Python to do the following task, rock, scissor, paper, game, include code comments that explain the code. All right, so I'm just gonna hit uh, enter and see what ChatGPT is going to generate us. All right, cool. So this is going to be uh, the code for the game, all right? So we have import random. So this is the first function, step play game, um, it really seems like this is the welcoming message and they have like uh, another following um, functions down below player choice All right, pretty cool. Uh, definitely uh, very uh, Very comprehensive code and also ChatGPT provides you with the explanations explaining um, What the function does and also like how the random random integer um functions in this case right so that's pretty cool right so this time uh, we're going to try one more thing using HAL analysis to generate a different project right so this time we're going to change the programming language from python to javascript and what should the code do right so instead of rock scissor paper game we're going to build something that is more complex maybe not not very complex but a little bit more complex than the previous um basic um rock scissors uh paper game right so i think i'm thinking about building a chess game but i think it's going to be a uh, pretty complicated so why don't we just build like a chrome extension i guess so so I'm just gonna type it down like this Chrome extensions that is able to detect fake news. I don't know, I don't think it's going to be very complex, but we'll see if ChatGPT is able to generate as that cool um, Chrome extensions, right? So yeah, I'm just gonna copy this prompt and gonna paste it uh, down here and see what we're going to get right so I'm just gonna hit enter all right cool uh, ChatGPT is now generating us the uh, call template um, for the Chrome extensions we have multiple different files here the JavaScript files um, what else you also have uh, content script content JS All right, so it's still generating, it's not done yet. So just wait patiently, guys. All right, so now it's uh, creating the manifest uh, JSON file. For those of you who are not really familiar with Chrome extensions, um, every single time you create Chrome extensions, you need to have manifest.json uh, file. Right, cool. I think we're almost done with this. So ChatGPT is generating us like three different files, um, two JavaScript files and one manifest.json or JavaScript object notations file down here. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, definitely this is a great call template that you can customize based on your need. Um, at release, if you're a software developer, uh, you want to build um, Chrome extensions, you don't have to start from scratch, right? You can customize this template, this code template. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of energy, which is great. So yeah, um, that's how you do it, guys. That's how you um, use from engineering for uh, generating code template for you know any project. So I think that's it. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to uh, do pretty much the same thing like what we did in the previous video. But instead of using whole analysis, we are going to use uh, Flow GPT to generate us uh, the prompt for uh, programming, right? So we're going to uh, select software development. And as you guys can see here, we have a pretty cool easy text to code generator. Just click on it. As you guys can see, uh, this is the prompt that will be utilized to generate us the code. So input a programming language and generate beginner friendly code based on user ideas. All right. So as you guys can see, uh, this is the prompt. Uh, feel free to customize this. 
So you'll generate the code in a specific programming language. Before we proceed, is put the programming language the user would like to generate it to be in. All right. So just gonna uh, click send. So now ChatGPT is generating um, the uh, the response. I'm ready to generate code in any programming language. Please specify the programming language you'd like the code to be written in. Right, so I'm going to write the programming language in C++ because in the previous video, we already tried uh, JavaScript and also Python, right? So this time we're going to try different programming language. So we're going to uh, try C++ and see uh, what's going to be the output, right? Sure, I can generate C++ code for you. What requirements do you have for the code? So it's simply asking us about, you know, the project that we want to build, like what is the code going to uh, be for. So I want the code to be able to recognize every odd number in the list. So the code should be able to recognize every um, odd number in the given list. All right, so that's uh, the job of our code to recognize every odd number in the given list. All right, so now uh, ChatGPT is generating us uh, the C++ code to um, do this job, all right? Okay, cool. So now um, it is still loading. So just wait. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer when it comes to generating the code. Uh, it totally makes sense because uh, the request that we input here is pretty complex request. So it's not surprising at all to see if JGPT takes, you know, a little bit longer to generate this code. Okay, cool. So um, finally, JGPT has generated us the code. Uh, the C++ code and guess what they also even add like the documentations for us here so yeah let me scroll up a little bit to show you what the code looks like so here here's a, some C++ code that will take an array of integers as input and print out all the odd numbers in the array all right so as you guys can see um don't worry if you're not really familiar with C++, that's completely fine. So uh, this is just like an example here, uh, 2, 5, 7, 14, 20, and 25. And among these six uh, numbers, there are uh, one, two, there are three of them that are odd number, right? So yeah, basically what this code uh, does, what these uh, four loops and if else statement does is to differentiate like which numbers are odd, which numbers are even. So yeah, uh, definitely a very powerful tool that you can uh, utilize to generate your code. Um, actually, I use it a lot to help me generating code. Um, so it is called Easy Text to Code Generator. It has been available on Flow GPT for uh, quite a while, and a lot of people are using this. Uh, prom generator guys because it's very easy to use and very easy to customize all right so i think that's it that's all you need to know i'll see you guys in the next video what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video we're going to learn prom engineering for content creation so um the first tool that we're going to utilize is prom vibes so i'm going to go down and then type uh youtube content all right just type, type youtube content all right, so as you guys can see, we have a prompt uh, specifically for YouTube content script writer. So I'm just going to click on it. So we're going to utilize this prompt to generate us a content script for our YouTube videos. So I'm just going to copy this prompt. Uh, as you guys can see, this is a pretty long prompt. 
and I'm going to go to my chat GPT and paste that here. So you're now an expert in creating short time videos for YouTube and will generate a block by block script for the user that's placed inside a beautiful table on its individual topics for the video. All right, so that's the prompt. All right, um, so actually we want uh, ChatGPT to break down um, every uh, segment of the video using like the time interval. So it's going to be easier for us, for content creator to uh, create the video. So I'm just gonna hit enter and see what ChatGPT is going to generate us. Okay, so before that, um, we actually need to provide uh, the topic right so we need to tell chat gpt what's going to be the topic for our youtube videos right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. actually i want um youtube i'm sorry i want chat gpt to uh, create a video about fictional history right so the topic will be fictional history particularly um, medieval ages history. All right, so I'm trying to specify uh, the topic that I want to create and then hit enter. And now, uh, as you guys can see, um, ChatGPT is generating us the time interval for each segment of the video. Uh, pretty cool, right? And also writing the content script for our YouTube videos. Right, cool. So we will wait until um, ChatGPT is done uh, processing our requests. All right, so it seems that we're done. As you guys can see, ChatGPT uh, generate us three different titles, uh, Tales of the Past, Exploring Fictional Medieval History. The second one is Lost Chronicles, Unraveling the Fictional Medieval Ages. And the, the third one here is Legends and Myths, A Journey Through Fictional Medieval History. And as you guys can see, uh, this is actually like my most favorite part because ChatGPT is able to break down into like beautiful time interval like this. It's going to make a whole lot easier to uh, create the video, right? Because you have this time interval. Okay, so from from the beginning of the video until uh, it hits 25 seconds, uh, we're going to have introductions. And then next, we're going to explain um, the fictional medieval history, stuff like that. So yeah, um, as you guys can see, they also provide you with the script. So actually, if you want to create animated video, then you can um, utilize text to video uh, generator to convert this text to uh, video or maybe text to audio first, then you will integrate uh, the audio with the video that you create, right? So yeah, that's how you um, utilize prompt generator to generate you a content script for YouTube video, guys, right? Uh, I think that's it. That's all you need to know. In the next video, we're going to learn uh, pretty much the same thing, but in the next video, we're going to uh, use FlowGPT to get the help from, from FlowGPT to get a uh, prompt to generate us uh, ideas for our social media content, you know, and other content creation related topics. So yeah, I think that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to utilize Flow GPT to get the prompt that we need to generate us um, ideas for our content. So I'm just gonna type in content like this and enter, all right? And I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And actually, we have a social media content and ID generator. So I'm going to utilize this prompt. As you guys can see, this is the prompt. Unlock the potential of AI generated content by leveraging this prompt to create um, captivating social. Okay, so I'm just going to hit uh, send. All right, so now it is running the chat GPT prompt. And we're going to wait what's going to be the response from um, chat GPT, great. What is the desired objective or purpose of your social media pause? All right, so um, in this particular prompt, we're not going to create video script that we did in the previous video, but instead we're going to be concentrating more on social media uh, pause. All right, so 
uh, I need to tell ChatGPT what's going to be my objective. Well, actually, I want to uh, create a fictional um, history, kind of the same topic that we tried in the previous video. But this time, it's not about medieval ages. Um, instead, the fictional history is about the Cold War or uh, the war between the United States and Soviet Union. So, the social media post is about uh, fictional history. related to Cold War. Alright, cool. So that's uh, my reply. So now ChatGPT is generating um, content ideas. Okay, got it. Here are some post ideas for your fictional history related to Cold War. So that's pretty cool because as you guys can see here, um, actually ChatGPT is generating us multiple different options so if we decided to post our content on youtube and it must be a video that's pretty obvious right uh, create a video essays on the alternate history of the cold war okay so alternate history i like it uh, highlighting the key events and decisions that could have led to a different outcome all right so that's very interesting um, idea there and i'm going to scroll down and what if we post it on Instagram? Share interesting facts and trivia related to the cold war through visuality, appealing graphics or infographics. Use captions to add a fictional twist uh, to historical events. And the good thing about it, um, ChatGPT even provide us with this um, relevant uh, captions. I'm sorry, relevant hashtags, not captions. Uh, relevant hashtags like hashtag Cold War facts, hashtag fictional history, and hashtag alternate Cold War. So let's scroll down. Uh, if we post on Twitter, then we need to start a thread where you introduce a fictional character who played a crucial role in shaping the course of the Cold War. If we post a video on TikTok, create a short video where you reenact a key event from the Cold War with fictional twists. Very interesting idea here. I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of views, especially if your um, video's quality is good. And if you post on Facebook, you need to post a lot for article that explores the different scenarios and outcomes that could have resulted from a cold war. Okay, also a pretty good idea. So yeah, that's a uh, social media content idea prompt. Why don't we try another prompt here? So I'm going to type in idea. Right, so I'm just going to... Pick this one, content ideas and optimization. All right, uh, kind of similar uh, prompt, very similar prompt with the one that we tried previously. All right, so I'm just gonna click um, send. But one thing that you gotta keep in mind um, this time, the prompt is going to be specifically intended for TikTok. All right, so if you have your TikTok account and you want to create TikTok um, videos, then you might want to use this prompt instead of the previous one because this pro this prompt is going to be more specific for TikTok. All right, so I'm just gonna hit send. All right, so it's loading. Uh, we'll see what ChatGPT is going to uh, generate here. Okay, so absolutely here are some innovative TikTok videos ideas you can consider: trendy dances, lip syncs, transformation videos, challenges, comedy skits. Use trending sounds, incorporate hashtags, post consistently. Okay, so these are tips that you need to, tips that you need to uh, to do in order to be successful on TikTok. Um, so actually, I'm going to ask uh, ChatGPT, hey, what will be um, some content ideas if I want to create videos related to history? All right, so going to type in like this give me uh, content ideas related to history all right and the thing that you need to know here um, actually the answer that will be provided by, Ch by chat GPT is still influenced by the initial prompt still influenced by the original prompt that we use on the top all right Okay, so now ChatGPT is going to generate as 
uh, several different ideas for our TikTok videos, uh, historical reenactments, famous monuments and UNESCO heritage site, famous people in history, history memes, historical fails, history trivial and quizzes, historical food. All right, pretty interesting stuff here. Yeah, so that's how you um, utilize this tool, guys. There are also many other um, prompts available on Flow GPT. Um, it's going to be a very long video if I try it like one by one. So I'm just going to try the one that is uh, interesting. All right, they also have SEO content writing here. Um, what else? If you skip scrolling down, social media strategies. Uh, if you are a social media influencer, then you might want to use this from because I'm pretty sure it's going to be very helpful. Content marketing booster. I think if you want to generate more traffic to your um, social media account, you want to get more followers, you want to get more views, then I think it's going to be um, wise if you use this prompt to, you know, see if ChatGPT can offer you solutions to your current problem, right? What else? Uh, social media strategies are. You have like many different options here, right? Just spend times to explore. Like the more prompts you try, uh, the better you're going to be at prompt engineering, guys. So yeah, um, let's say we want to try one more uh, prompt here before ending this video. So I'm thinking about trying, um, I'm thinking about trying this one. Or maybe not. Maybe this one, Instagram captions. Instagram captions and hashtags generator. So as you guys can see, um, they have a very long prompt here. All right. So we're just going to try this prompt. We're not going to change anything and we'll see uh, the results, right? So I'm just gonna click send. Sometimes it is very important for you to pay very close attention to your hashtags because it's going to help you your post a lot um, to get uh, noticed by people who are interested in your niche, right? So captions. So this is the captions. Don't worry. You're not alone All right, pretty cool um, Captions and these are all relevant tags all relevant hashtags that should be included in your post to help Your post to get noticed by more people. So yeah, uh, definitely a very powerful prompt that you can utilize especially if you're stuck um, you don't know what caption that you sh should give to your post or what hashtags that you should include in your post um, This tool is definitely going to help you a, a lot, right? So yeah guys, I think that's it. That's all you need to know about um, Prompt engineering for content creations. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to learn um, Prompt engineering for resume and CV template. So I'll see you guys there What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn prompt engineering for creating resume and CV templates. So we're going to utilize Flow GPT. So I'm just going to type in resume here. And as you guys can see, there are like many different uh, prompts available related to the resume. You have tailor your resume, your resume summarizer. If you want to summarize uh, someone, uh, someone else's resume, then you might want to utilize this prompt. Resume editor, uh, resume prompt generator, so I guess if you want to uh, get the template for your resume, you can utilize that. Basic being resume cover letter, uh, what else? Um, resume editor. So there are like many different uh, resume, right? So I'm just gonna type in resume builder like this, or maybe resume generator, right? There are many of them. Um, so I'm just gonna click on this resume generator. And as you guys can see, this is the prompt. All right, so a uh, pretty long and complex prompt. So I'm just gonna click send. And now, as you guys can see, ChatGPT is running the prompt. All right, so okay, so uh, this is the response from ChatGPT. Great, before we start, may, a may I ask what professions you're in? This will allow us to tailor your resume for your specific industry and increase your chance of getting noticed by potential employers. All right, so I'm going to type in data analyst all right, so that's going to be our professions. That's just an example. So actually, I uh, was an IT consultant, not data analyst. So here we go. Data analyst, excellent. 
do you have an existing resume you'd like to review or refine or would you like to create one from scratch so actually i prefer to go with the second options um so i want to create uh, my resume from scratch right Right, so here we go. I'm just going to hit enter. All right, so uh, this is the response from ChatGPT. Great, let's get started by first uh, creating header that will include your name, phone number, and email address. Please provide me your full name and the phone number and email address you would like to use on your resume. So it's going to be Chris Raharja. Um, then the next thing, my phone number. Well, I'm just going to use, um, you know, like a random phone number here. So 0876-35678, all right? Just like very random number, right? Um, and the email address is going to be fintrend at gmail.com. All right, here we go. Okay, cool. So now ChatGPT is going to process the information that we input. Thank you for providing that information. Next, we will create a summary statement that will grape the intentions of potential employer by highlighting your most significant skills and experiences. Can you provide me with brief statements summarizing your experiences and skills as a data analyst? This should be approximately two or three sentences long. Right, so I'm just gonna type in, I am a data-driven analyst who has expertise in data mining, data um, cleaning, and data modeling. I have um, intermediate skills in Python. Um, SQL and JavaScript. All right, I think that's it. So that's going to be my response to that questions. Uh, so as you guys can see, this problem actually is amazing, guys. Okay, can you imagine like how we are able to have this continuous conversation? So ChatGPT keep asking uh, more about our details, about our informations to build. Um, you know, high quality resume, right? So great, that's an excellent summary. Now let's move on to your professional experience. Please provide me your recent work experience. It should include your job title, company name, employment dates, and a brief descriptions of your responsibilities and achievements in that role. Okay, so I'm just gonna answer this uh, briefly. So my job title, it was a technology risk analyst. Uh, the company name, I'm going to name it as Company ABC, all right? I, I don't want to disclose my actual company name. Uh, employment date is from 2021 to 2022, all right? Uh, what else? A brief description of your responsibilities. So I was responsible for handling uh, clients, cyber security and data management. All right, so that's um, my responsibilities or kind of like my job descriptions. And I don't really have any achievement in that role to be honest with you, but all right, so I'm just gonna um, leave it blank and all right, so here we go. Thank you for that information. Can you provide me with another work experience? So previously I was working too as data intern at um, company, maybe BCD. All right, so I'm just not going to disclose the name of the company for some reasons. Um, so data intern at company BCD, that's going to be the name of my company and I was uh, it was from two, 2020 to 2021 and I was responsible for 
uh, product data uh, management and data extractions all right so that's uh, like my responsibility for that particular job great thank you for that please provide one lost work experience if applicable well to be honest with you i don't have any you know prior work experience so no um that's all i got all right so that's going to be my reply here okay cool so now i guess that gpt is going to generate us the resume Understood. Let's move on to your educations. Please provide me with your highest level of educations, including degree, type, major, and the name of your institutions you attend. All right. So this time, uh, I think that's completely fine for me to disclose my, um, like latest uh, educations. So, uh, bachelor of science, or maybe I'm just gonna type in like BS, bachelor of science and uh, applied mathematics all right so this is actually my actual degree right uh from university of washington of washington bottle all right uh and i graduated in 2021 all right with 3.6 gpa so that's uh, my GPA. It was between like 3.5 or 3.6. I kind of forget like the exact um, number. Okay, cool. So now ChatGPT is loading um, the new response. Lastly, uh, let's create the sections for your skills. Please provide me with a list of most relevant technical and soft skills that you would like to highlight on your resume. Some important skills to consider including programming languages, data analysis, analysis software, uh, and any other relevant tools or abilities. All right, so I'm going to start with programming languages. I'm going to highlight like five different programming languages that I'm pretty expert. So it's going to be Python, um, Java, JavaScript, uh, MATLAB, and uh, what else? Um, Ruby. Well, not Robbie. I'm not really good at it, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go with R. All right. So R is um, programming language designed specifically for uh, data analysis. I'm also good at data extractions, data visualization, and also data cleaning. Or maybe not. I'm going to highlight another thing. SAP. All right. Okay, cool. So now just wait. ChatGPT is going to generate us the uh, template. Maybe the resume template. So just wait. Uh, it might take a while. It might take you a little bit longer than usual. So just wait patiently, guys. All right. So now it is still loading. All right, so while waiting, I'm gonna let you know in the next video, we're going to um, utilize prompt vibes to help us generating a new um, resume from our old resume, all right? So we're going to uh, utilize ChatGPT to fix our resume. Okay, very cool guys. Look at this beautiful resume. I'm just gonna scroll down. Scroll down. Okay, Chris Raharja, this is my phone, this is my email, summary, professional experience. Definitely a pretty cool resume template that you can customize. Uh, feel free to add you know, any modifications to this. Yeah, you can copy and paste this to your Google Docs and save it as PDF or whatever. Yeah, education, skills, professional experience, a pretty cool resume, huh? Yeah, so I think that's it. That's um, how you use this problem to generate you this high quality resume. So I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to utilize um, prompt vibes to edit or make revisions to your resume. So I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to utilize prompt vibes to uh, edit our existing resume. All right, so in the previous video, we already learned how to 
uh, build resume from scratch, from complete scratch um, this time. I'm going to assume you already have your resume, but you just want ChatGPT to help you to beautify your resume, right? To make it more beautiful. So as you guys can see right now, I'm on promvibes.com. So all you need to do is just to type in resume here and then you have like many different options. All right. And I'm going to go with uh, ChatGPT resume editor, right? So if you go up here, uh, where is it? Um, right here, like the first one that show up here, just click on it, it will take you here. And they have a very long prom here, right? So I want you to act as a resume editor. I'll provide you with my current resume and you will review it for any errors or areas for improvement. You'll still look for any type of grammatical errors or formatting issues and suggest changes to improve your the overall clarity and effectiveness of the resume. You should provide feedback on the contents of the resume. All right, so I'm just gonna use it. So let's go to each GPT and then uh, copy and paste that prom. All right, so now, um, ChatGPT is going to ask um, us to provide a resume, right? So I'm going to pick my very old resume that I haven't touched for uh, maybe like years, guys. So I'm just gonna uh, open it up here. So I'm gonna click find and desktop or maybe download here. Uh, resume, All right? So I'm just gonna um, scroll down. Where is it? I even forget where I kept that resume guys so i really apologize if it took a while to get it okay so cool uh that's my resume so i'm just gonna uh, open it all right cool so um this is my resume so i'm just gonna copy and paste like the whole thing here and I'm going to place it here all right cool so as you guys can see i've copy and pasted my resume all right so sure, I have reviewed your resume and made some revisions for clarity, grammar, and formatting. Here's the edited version. So this is like the new versions uh, of my resume that has been edited, that has been um, corrected by ChatGPT, as you guys can see here. Pretty cool, right? Uh, it only took like less than a couple seconds. So yeah, uh, if you use this particular prompt, it's going to be very powerful where you can um, use your existing resume and then create like the new one with, uh, you know, better look, right? So yeah, that's how you uh, utilize this Prom Vibes uh, resume editor. Uh, I think that's it, guys. That's all you need to know. It's definitely um, very useful, especially if you're actively looking for jobs. It's going to be uh, very advisable for you to um, utilize this Prom to help you um, beautify your resume, guys. So I think that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn Prom Engineering for market research and we're going to utilize flow gpt again and you might be wondering why you always use flow gpt well the answer to that question is actually very simple um because this is the platform with the most uh promise available here that's the reason why i'm very comfortable using this uh tool all right so i'm just gonna type in market research like this all right so just type in market research and you have like four different options here. I'm going to go with the first one, market research and analytics for businesses. So as you guys can see, uh, the problem is very complex here, right? Uh, present to be MRI, GPT or market research and analytics chatbot whose sole goal is to help corporations identify and pander to their client. All right, so I'm not going to read uh, every single sentence here. It's going to make the video very long. So I'm just gonna click send. All right, so now as you guys can see, ChatGPT is uh, running our prompt. So please be patient. All right, cool. Practical money management and how to invest in your company. Model research mode describe your company and the bot will identify three major groups of clients through logical deductions, specialized majority, um, lay people majority and minority. Analysis mode, um, Describe who represents it ca its category of people. All right, so I'm just going to tell um, ChatGPT like my uh, main business. All right, so I'm going to tell ChatGPT like what is the industry that I'm involved with. So yeah, um, I'm just going to type in e-commerce uh, business, specifically selling um, below. All right, so that's uh, my business that I want this bot to analyze. 
All right, cool. So ChatGPT is now generating a new response for us. I don't know yet if ChatGPT is going to provide us with the data insights or maybe still going to ask a couple questions to get more information. All right, cool, cool. Uh, as you guys can see, now ChatGPT has generated us the um, market research data. I think it's going to be very valuable insight. So, all right, we're just going to wait until ChatGPT is done generating this response. Okay, cool. So apparently uh, ChatGPT is done. So yeah, research mode uh, pillows are houseable items. So people interested um, in home accessories and their design will be interested in this product. Therefore, MS. Uh, pillows are also a necessity for sleeping. Okay, so it seems that this product has a pretty high demand in the market. So people who have value a good might. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, people who value a good night sleep and comfort will be interested. Pillows can also have uh, therapeutic benefits such as neck and back supports or relief from allergies so people with specific health concerns or needs will be interested. Okay, so they also kind of break down um, our potential uh, customers for our products. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit to show you the table here. Majority is specialized interested in home accessories and enter designs majority lay people values good night sleeps and comfort minority have specific health concerns or need related to pillow all right so what even better they also have a to-do list and also things that you need to avoid so the to-do list that we need to do to maybe increase our sales over a wide variety of pillow types to cater to different health concerns and sleep preferences all right so that's one of the uh, advices that this bot gave us right provide detailed product descriptions and customer reviews to convince lay people majority over limited editions or designer pillows to track specialized majority over a subscription service for a regular pillow replacement to ensure customer health needs are met over promotional discounts and model deals to encourage customers to purchase multiple pillow at once over a loyalty program to incentivize customers to return. Can you imagine like the quality of the answer given? It's very close to like actual business consultant, right? So that's amazing. And also things that we need to avoid, uh, use low quality materials or, or promote cheap and effective pillows. All right, so uh, these are the list that we need to avoid, right? They actually also break down um, those to-do list and also things that we need to avoid in this table. So it's going to be easier for us to um, take a look and, you know, do our analysis before making our um, business decision. So, yeah, um, definitely, to be honest with you, this problem is actually very powerful. Um, if you have your business and you might want to get um, consultations, with this bot, just use this prompt, guys. It's going to help you a lot, right? It's definitely a very valuable business consultations with ChatGPT, even though this is not the actual um, business consultant, all right? So I'm not talking to like real business consultant, but the quality of answer provided is very close or maybe if not better than, you know, the real business consultant, right? So. Yeah, I um, think that's it. That's all you need to know. I'll see you guys in the next video where we go, we're going to uh, learn how to generate prompt for uh, industry trend, right? So it's always important for you to uh, pay very close attention to industry trend, uh, making sure that your business or your business decision is still relevant to, to current trends on the market, right? Always keep in mind um, Paying close attention to uh, today's trend is very essential to make sure that your business uh, still grows and also um, competitive, right? So yeah, I think that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. What's up guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn um, still the same thing from engineering for market research. But in this video, we're going to concentrate more on industry trend, right? So I'm just gonna type in industry trend, that's it. And just gonna pick the one here that says industry trend predictions. All right, so 
as you guys can see, you can customize uh, the industry. So let's say uh, you are selling chocolate bar, right? So just type in chocolate bar and that's it. Just gonna click send. So now we're going to run uh, the chat GPT prompt. All right, so cool. So now chat GPT is generating the response. Uh, this is like the industry trend predictions for chocolate bar. Introductions. The chocolate bar industry is a multi-billion uh, dollar industry that has been growing consistently over the years. Chocolate bar are a popular snack among people of all ages and the demand for high quality chocolate bars, well, it moves really fast. I need to scroll back up, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Um, Alright, so chocolate bars are a popular snack. Well, I need to scroll back up again. I'm sorry, guys. It moves really fast. Um, chocolate bars are a popular snack among people of all ages, and the demand for high-quality chocolate bars has been on the rise. In the industry report, we will analyze the latest trend, relevant news, and significant companies in the chocolate bar industry. So, um, significant companies uh, is going to be like the major player in the market, right? So, market size... As you guys can see here, uh, the market size was valued at 130 billion in 2020. So this is from 2020, and it's expected to grow at 4.6% from 2023 to 2028. So um, that's definitely a good number. So it really indicates that these products still has a high demand and still projected to um, to be a high demand product in the market, right? considering this number 4.6 percent so yeah guys um that's how you do um industry trend uh predictions using this prompt definitely this is very uh, powerful problem to use all right you can feel free to customize it um uh, with whatever industry that you are involved with all right so i just use chocolate bar as an example i don't really sell a chocolate bar to be honest with you so yeah guys that's how you uh utilize this uh, amazing tool um Definitely, if you want to uh, use this prompt on ChatGPT, you can do it. Just copy and paste it on ChatGPT and feel free to, you know, change this part, uh, replace this part with, you know, whatever products or service that you're selling, right? So, yeah, um, I think that's it for industry uh, trend predictions. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to uh, learn prompt engineering for uh, languages, all right? So, I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn prompt engineering for learning languages, all right? So let's go back to our Flow GPT. I'm sorry if you guys get bored with Flow GPT, but uh, actually we have a very cool prompt uh, that is available here on this platform. So just type in languages and then click search, all right? It will take you here and there are like several different options here. Uh, not many options. Unfortunately, when you uh, only type in language and then click search, a uh, vast majority of prompts show up here are programming languages, not real human languages, right? So there are only like two or three of them. So let's pick this one, learning languages, right? So as you guys can see, uh, this is the prompt as an experienced English teacher. So you're going to be having conversations with English teacher, right? Um, with 10 years of teaching expertise, your task is to provide simplified meanings and examples uh, sentences for a given set of English words. Imagine explaining these concepts to a 10 year old, right? So, um, ChatGPT is going to explain you uh, from the perspective of a beginner, right? From the perspective of elementary students. So, ChatGPT is going to explain um, the meaning of its word. So, if you want to change this, feel free to customize it. So, for example, I want to change this to um, castle, right? And I'm also going to change this word to uh, end it. Or maybe I'm trying to change this to, you know, more complicated vocabulary, I guess. Nonetheless. All right. So then click send. So now we're going to run uh, the prompt and we'll see what's going to be the response. All right. So just wait. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, all right, so as you guys can see, it is still loading. Uh, ChatGPT is still preparing for the answers. But I think this prompt is amazing because you are telling ChatGPT like the role that ChatGPT is going to play, uh, which is an experienced English teacher with 10 years of experience in this case. 
and you also specify uh, the instructions like what ChatGPT should do. All right. Okay. Cool. So now ChatGPT is generating you uh, the table. So these are you know the vocabularies that we included um, on the prompt. Right. So let me show you. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Okay. So the first word here is castle. And a meaning a big building where kings and queens lived a long time ago. Example: the princess lived in a castle on the top of a hill. All right, so um, ChatGPT have ChatGPT has like two different responses. The first one is uh, the meaning, and the second one is the example when that word is being used. All right, so two types of responses. All right, uh, also the same thing with uh, the other words uh, among, in the, all right. Okay, cool. So yeah, we've learned how to uh, utilize this prompt learning languages. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to uh, utilize another prompt to help you learn languages and vocabularies, guys. So I think that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, um, we're still going to learn about prompt engineering for learning languages. Um, however, we're not going to use um, Flow GPT anymore. Instead, we're going to use Aspose. All right. So I'm just going to show you like another tool that you can um, consider to use for getting prompt for learning languages and vocabularies. Right. So just type in um, language here. All right. So language, or maybe just type in English, especially if you want to learn English. And as you guys can see, you have like three different options here. Um, so you have English translator and improver, right? Uh, depending on your need, make sure that you pick the one that will suit your uh, objective. You have English pronunciation helper, right? And also spoken English teacher and improver. So for example, you just want to improve your English. Why don't we try to use this prompt? So we're just gonna copy this and let's go to our chat GPT and then paste it here. So I want you to act as an English translator, spelling, uh, corrector, and improver. I'll speak to you in any language and you will detect the language, translate it, and answer it in the corrected and improved versions of my text in English. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to enter, all right? Of course, I'll do my best to um, assist you as an English translator and improve your text using more sophisticated language. All right, so I'm going to try it out. So I'm going to intentionally make a grammatical mm -hmm. mistake. All right, so I'm just gonna test it out. Correct uh, my grammatical mistake. I um, it foot yesterday, all right? So actually it should have been eight because that's going to be the verb two, uh, past tense, but We'll see if ChatGPT is able to fix that mistake, right? All right, I consumed nourishment yesterday. Okay, uh, pretty cool. So, uh, ChatGPT generated like a new response uh, that still has the same meaning, but with more uh, sophisticated um, version of English, right? So, what about if I try to speak in different language and see if ChatGPT is able to translate that uh, sentence to English, all right? So I'm going to speak in uh, my native language, which is Indonesian. So, um, Selamat pagi, something like this. And we'll see if ChatGPT is going to translate that word to English, all right? Okay, I don't know why it takes uh, so long. All right, cool. So now it has been translated as you guys can see here. Uh, which is great. All right, let's try to do one more thing here. I will intentionally do um, intentionally create like grammatical mistake again, and then I will ask ChatGPT to correct uh, my grammatical mistake. Right. So I'm going to type in uh, kind of the same thing here. Uh, correct my grammatical mistake. Right. And this time I'm going to make a pretty stupid mistake. Actually, see. Um, or beautiful it should have been says beautiful right um but we'll see if ChatGPT is going to correct this 
see it's beautiful all right so yeah that's how it works guys i know like these examples that i showed you are pretty basic uh but you can actually use this for you know any purpose right for any um activity you might want chat gpt to generate uh you uh, different phrase or paraphrase your uh, sentences or maybe you want chat gpt to translate um, your paragraphs or maybe fix your grammatical mistake or whatever your purpose is um definitely this tool i'm sorry this problem is going to be very useful all right so yeah i, I think that's it i'll see you guys in the next video we're going to learn uh, prompt engineering for um email template all right so i'll see you guys there What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn uh, prompt engineering for um, writing email template, all right? So uh, we're going to utilize this tool called whole analysis and make sure that you're on uh, write something sections and then select email, all right? Because we want to uh, create email template. So just enter the main topic, like what's going to be um, the objective of your email. So I guess, um, I'm going to try with this topic, um, email to invite my clients for future collaborations, all right? So I want to invite my clients for, you know, future collaborations, all right? Uh, for the subtopics, I think I'm going to leave this empty, right? Um, what else? Because I'm trying to convince my client to join my project. I'm going to select persuasive, right? So I'm trying to convince uh, the prospect of, you know, my project. So my uh, clients will consider to join uh, my project, right? And right in this tone, so I'm going to select optimistic, all right? So I want the tone to be optimistic. Uh, what else? Include this keyword. So there are like several keywords that I want to include. So those are uh, projects, uh, prospective, what else? Um, maybe uh, profitable. I think that's it. I'm just going to uh, include these three keywords. And for the negative keywords, uh, so if you have anything to be excluded from the prompt, just make sure that you ate those keywords here, right? Okay, cool. And reading grade level. Um, so this time, I want my email template to look very professional, right? And my client is definitely a highly educated. Um, so I think it's not going to be a big problem if we increase uh, the reading grade level all the way up to grade 12, right? So obviously, ChatGPT is going to be more frequently using uh, more complex vocabularies, but I think it's going to look professional and it's going to uh, it's going to be good for us, right? And required word count. Uh, I don't want the email to be very long because I want to make sure uh, the client will read like the whole thing. Uh, but at the same time, I also don't want it to be very short, right? Because very short email template looks not very professional. So I think I'm going to go with 200. 50 words or maybe that's too long i'm just gonna go with 200 words all right okay cool um or maybe even 200 words is too long so i'm just gonna go with um 150 words all right i think that's it that's it i'm just gonna copy this prompt all right a uh, very cool prompt here right 150 word email about um invitations okay okay i i think i need to fix this all right so i'm going to fix it invitation so write a uh, 150 word email about invitations for my clients invitation to my clients for future collaborations all right so i'm just gonna copy this or maybe you can just uh click on this button and then let's go to chat gpt and then paste that from here and then enter all right so we'll see um chat gpt is now generating us the email template where you can customize it, feel free to add modifications to this email template to adjust your needs. So yeah, dear, uh, the name of our client, right? So I hope this email finds you well. I'm reaching out to extend a heartfelt invitation for you, for you to you for an exciting opportunity to collaborate on future projects. After carefully analyzing our past interactions and considering the 
immense potentials for growth. I am confident that joining forces will prove highly advantages for both our businesses. Right, so uh, definitely very high quality email templates that you can customize it based on your need. Um, so yeah, guys, that's how you uh, utilize how analysis to generate your prompt. Um, I think that's it. That's all you need to know. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to learn uh, how to use another tool, which is FlowGPT again, to um, generate you uh, email template, right? So I'll see you guys there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn um, the same exact thing that we learned in the previous video. So we're still going to learn prompt engineering for email template. But in this video, we're going to utilize different tools. So instead of using whole analysis, we're going to uh, use flow GPT. So as you guys can see here, I've already typed email and then search. And if you scroll down here, there are many different uh, prompts available for you to use uh, related to email template. So you have professional business email, we have cold email GPT, all right? So there are many of them and you should explore. But obviously the video is going to be very long if we try to uh, test every single one of them. So I'm just gonna pick one that is most interesting, all right? So that is email generator. I'm just gonna pick this one. As you guys can see, um, this prompt is going to help you a lot to uh, create an email. Um, in a short period of time right so normally it will take you like maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes to create like your email draft but utilizing this prompt you're going to spend maybe less than three minutes or even less than a minute to create your email template right so as you guys can see here all we need to do is just to fill in uh, the informations right so let's say the name um, is going to be uh, my boss let's say his name is mr johnson all right, just, you know, just random name and the subject. Yeah, it's going to be a project update, all right? So I'm going to uh, update uh, my project and his pronouns is going to be he, him, all right? And the pleasantries is going to be, uh, thank the recipient for the email. Yeah, sure. Uh, the main point, um, just going to let him know that the data has been updated and the code has been integrated with the main system. All right, so that's my main message, my main point. And the tone is going to be professional, informative, and maybe not sympathetic. We're just going to remove that part because that's not very relevant to our uh, topics. And for the name, it's going to be um, see above um referring to mr johnson all right so uh i think i'm going to uh scroll down a little bit and lastly for the closing it's going to be thanks for the uh time together on this project best regards i'm going to replace there with your all right so i think that's it i'm just gonna send and see what chat gpt is going to generate us all right Dear Mr. Johnson, thank you for your email. I'm writing to provide you with an update on the project. We have completed the following tasks, updated the data, integrated the code with the main system. We believe these updates will greatly benefit the project and improve its functionality. Um, we'll be able to see these changes in action soon. We will be reaching out soon to introduce ourselves and answer any questions um, I think I kind of messed up in the pronouns here. I think we should just um, replace this with I. So I'm sorry, guys. Um, if there is anything else we can assist with in the mean meantime, please let us know. Thank you for your time and collaborations on this project. Best regards. And this is going to be my name, right? So yeah, guys. Um, so that's the email. Uh, definitely a very professional email. So I think this probe... Uh, really generates uh, amazing email templates that you can uh, customize to adjust your need guys so yeah i think that's it for um, email i'll see you guys in the next video we're going to learn uh, prompt engineering but for text to image generator instead of chat gpt so i'll see you guys there what's up guys welcome back to the course in the previous session, we already learned prompt engineering for ChatGPT, and in this session, we're going to learn prompt engineering for AI text to image generator. And there are many different 
uh, AI text to image generator out there. You have Midjourney, you have Leonardo AI, you have um, Stable Diffusion, Doll E, what else? Hotpot AI, Playground AI, and still many more. But in this course, we're going to be concentrating on two AI text to image generator, and those two are Dell E and Leonardo AI, all right? And in this video, we're going to be focusing on Dell E. And in the next video, we're going to talk about Leonardo AI. So as you guys can see here, we have two complex prompt generator. So we're going to enter like a very basic prompt and then click generate. And then the AI is going to generate us like more complex prompt for Dell E. And also Leonardo AI. All right, so let's scroll up a little bit. So if you're wondering like how to create um, effective prompts for AI text to image generator, well, actually the rules are exactly the same with ChatGPT prompts, guys. You need to be clear, you need to be specific, you need to set context and also constraint. You need to emphasize what you want, uh, what output that you are expecting to see. All right, also be mindful of length. It's totally fine to have a, a little bit longer uh, prompt, but don't make it to be very long, like one paragraph. That's just going to make the AI a little bit confused, you know? And what else? Also do experiment with different phrasing. So for example, you generate an image, um, you don't get the image that you really want. You don't get the image that you really expect to get. Uh, maybe you need to modify the prompt a little bit all right, so yeah, um, when it comes to the rules, it's going to be exactly the same uh, with uh, the rules for ChatGPT prompts. So let's go to slide four, uh, where is it here? And then click on Open AI. So yeah, guys, welcome to Open AI. And in order to be able to access Dolly, you need to create your account on Open AI first. So that's the first thing that we need to do here. So. Just click sign up. I'm going to assume you haven't created your account yet, right? So I'm just gonna click sign up. And you actually have two options here. Either you want to sign up manually by entering your email address and password manually, or you can also sign up um, using either Google, I mean like your Gmail account, or maybe your Microsoft account, right? Um, and actually the second option is going to be more straightforward. So I'm just gonna click on it. Actually, you can also sign up using your Apple ID though. And just choose the email that you want to be registered on Dolly. All right, cool. So now I've logged in. All right, I'm just gonna close this. And if you go to product, as you guys can see, you have like several different options here, several different uh, products. You have ChatGPT, you have GPT-4, and you have Dolly 2 So Dolly 2 means a uh, Dolly version 2, right? So yeah, just click on it. All right, so we'll take you to Dolly 2 uh, Welcome to Dolly, guys. Um, to try, just click on this button, try Dolly. Just gonna close this tab. All right, um, as you guys can see, uh, this is what Dolly dashboard looks like. If you go uh, click on your account here, um, it should be 50 credits, right? So if you just created your account, it should be 50 credits. Uh, so it means that you're able to generate up to 50 um, images for completely free. However, the reason why you see um, only have like 15 credits so far, because actually I already use uh, 35 credits uh, before. So that's the reason is why I only have like 15 credits left. But if you've just created your account, your account is a brand new account. Uh, you've just created like a couple seconds ago, it should have been um, 50 credits, right? And every single time you generate an image, um, it's going to subtract one from your total credits. All right, cool. So yeah, uh, just keep that in mind. And if you go to collections, uh, you see nothing here because I haven't added any um, image to my collection list and if you go to history you can see all images that you have generated in the past right so if you scroll down these are all images that you have generated in the past all right so I'm just gonna go to doll e and the way we use it is actually very simple all you need to do is just to type in your prompt here right and then click generate that's it just type in the prompt and then click generate that's how it works all right so 
let's go back to the slide slide 16 we have two problem generators all right and the way they work are actually very similar to chat gpt problem generator the only thing that we need to do is to type in the basic prompt and then enter and the ai is going to generate you like more complex uh, version of that prompt all right so the first one here is tipseason.com and the second one is social boo all right so i'm just gonna open both of them so this is tip season welcome to tip season guys all you need to do is to type in your basic prompt here and add you know categories styles lighting artists camera colors texture and characters to it and then the prompt will show up here and then all you need to do is to copy it and then paste it here uh, kind of the same thing with social boo uh, all you need to do is to type in um, the basic prompt and then click generate and then Social Boo is going to generate you um, like more complex versions of that basic prompt uh, with added ideas to it, right? So yeah, let's get started. Uh, which one that you want to try first? I think I'm going to go with the first one, Tip Season. So I'm just gonna um, do some experiments here. I'm going to type in um, an A. An A. Um, sitting in the chair all right a very basic prompt i guess and for the category you can add any category here um album cover anatomical drawing anatomy book cover business cards brand identity and again uh this is actually optional so if you um don't find anything that aligns with what you want then just don't just don't add it right Logo design, magazine, menu design, game UI, dollhouse, comic strip, flyer, outfit, t-shirt, uh, storyboard, what else, t-shirt factor, wedding invitations, animal, so I'm just gonna add animal here, right? And for the style, I'm going to um, add action painting all right uh maybe there's something else that i want to add 3d maybe not abstract or maybe not for the lighting i really want it to be like back lighting i think it's going to be more beautiful uh, feel free to add you know more uh, lighting maybe you also want to add soft lighting it's totally up to you right it, it's totally up to you it depends on what you want and go to artists um there are like many different type of artists here but i want it to be like naturally drawn so i i, I don't want to add any artists here camera um i think i'm going to go with split focus here for the colors uh you have like many different options for the colors i really want it to be orange and maybe just orange or maybe not i'm going to go with um black right i think it's going to uh, be more beautiful texture you can also set the texture here uh you want it to be 3d fractals aluminum amber i don't think it's going to be appropriate to add any texture to the prompt uh characters alien anarchist asian baby All right so i'm not gonna add any characters here because i think it's going to mess up our um, prom because we already set the character to be an ape if you add like any other characters to it uh, the ai is going to be confused with what you want right so make sure that your instructions that you set is very clear hey i want to draw an app but if you add like for example alien then ai is going to be a little bit confused um wondering like what what you want actually right you want a or alien or both of them right so as you guys can see here the prompt is ready to be used so just copy it all right so now it has been copied to our clipboard so just go back to doll e and then uh you can paste it here and then click generate all right so it might take like a couple seconds or it's not going to take too long it's only going to take like maybe less than a minute less than 30 seconds i'm pretty sure based on my um experience all right cool so now um as you guys can see, Dolly has generated us four different images. So look at this. This is the first one, the first ape. Um, 
second one here. All right. Um, this is the second one. And this is the third one here. A uh, pretty cool one. Uh, I think my most favorite one is the fourth, not the fourth one, the second one actually. It looks really cool. Yeah, so if you want to save it, just click save, right? And it will save your image to your collections. If you want to share it, click share. Um, if you want to download it, just click on this uh, icon, right? It will automatically download your image. And what else? You have variations too. If you click on the variations, uh, actually it will take like another credit from your uh, total credit. So just keep that in mind. So it's going to still utilize the same prompt, but it will generate you like one more uh, image here. All right. So yeah, guys, that's how you uh, utilize this uh, tip season prompt generator. And this time, let's try uh, another prompt generator called Social Boo. All right, so this time, we're going to generate a different image. So let's say we want to generate an image of a pirate, right? So I'm just going to type in pirate, pirate in a boat, all right? A very basic prompt here, and I'm going to click generate. And now, um, Social Boo is going to generate like more complex versions of this prompt. As you guys can see here, uh, this is like more complex versions. Um, so what Social Boo does is simply to add, you know, more ideas to this prompt, right? A pirate in a boat with an iPad and a parrot on his shoulder. All right, if you want to try it out, just click copy. All right, so now um, we've copied this uh, prompt. And then let's go back to Doll E and let's go back to Doll E dashboard. And then you might want to paste it here and then click generate. All right, so now it's generating our image. Just wait, I might take you like a couple seconds, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be that long. So be patient, guys. All right, so now um, Dolly has generated four images. As you guys can see, we have like four uh, cool images here. Uh, I think the second one is my most favorite one. Look at this, uh, pretty cool. And I think the first one is better though than the second one. Um, because it really represents, you know, pirate style with iPads and, you know, he is standing in his boat with his short um, on his right hand or maybe his left hand. Yeah. And also like the fourth one is also pretty cool. Um, look at this typical pirate hat. Uh, kind of cool, right? So, yeah, that's how you utilize this uh, prompt generator. If you want to try like one more, uh, let's do it. So actually, if you're asking me like which one is my most favorite um, tip season or social boo i think i'm going to go with social boo because it's actually like more simple um so in type season you need to add you know many different categories styles lighting artists manually but instead uh instead of adding like those categories and social boo all you need to do is to type in the basic from and then click generate and then it will give you the ideas so yeah let's try a different thing here so i'm going to i'm going to generate an image of uh, winter in tropical country all right uh, I, I know that sounds kind of interesting so let's try that out so winter in tropical country all right so i'm just gonna click generate and then social boost is going to generate as a um, new idea new prompt a bit at sunset during winter in a tropical country so i'm just gonna copy that so if you're not satisfied with this you can regenerate it again and to see if uh, social boo is going to uh, give you another idea here this is the new one uh, beats with palm trees covered in snow all right sounds pretty interesting actually so yeah uh, we're going to try that out so i'm just gonna um, remove that and then copy and paste this all right so a beats with palm tree covered in snow i don't know what it will look like but hopefully it's going to be the good one here all right so yeah guys that's how you uh, utilize these two prompt generators um so yeah, just wait. Uh, it might take you like a couple seconds here. All right, so finally it's done. All right, pretty cool, right? Look at these images. So when you see like the pulp tree, um, like the first thing that came into your mind is going to be, okay, it's, it's a tropical country, hot summer, but can you imagine like this? Um, you have a palm tree in the beach, but covered in snow. It looks super realistic, by the way. So yeah, guys, that's how you uh, utilize this um, 
two prompt generators. Uh, I think that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to uh, do pretty much the same thing. We're going to learn uh, prompt engineering for text image generator, but we're going to utilize uh, Leonardo AI uh, the, for that video, all right? So I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn prompt engineering for AI text to image generator. But in this video, we're going to be concentrating on Leonardo AI. As you guys can see, right now I'm on Leonardo AI. If you don't know how to get here, just go back to slide four and then click uh, this link and it will take you here, all right? So yeah, um, this is Leonardo AI. Uh, to get started, just click um, launch app and then click Yes, I'm white listed, right? Just click on that button and then it will take you to Leonardo AI dashboard. And for those of you who might be wondering, like why should you use Leonardo AI instead of Mid Journey? Well, both of them have the same quality, but unfortunately Mid Journey um, just got rid of its free uh, trial account a couple weeks ago. So. Now, if you want to get the access to Mid Journey, you want to generate image um, on Mid Journey, you will need to pay ten dollars uh, per month, right? But Leonardo AI, um, until the time I'm recording right now, it is still completely free, right? So every day you're going to get one hundred fifty credits. So it means that you're able to generate up to one hundred fifty images for completely free every single day, right? So um, they have like the same quality. They have like the same uh, pre-trained data set, but Leonardo AI still remains free. So that's the reason why uh, people are moving to Leonardo AI. All right, so now it is still loading. I'm sorry, I don't know why it takes so long. So I'm just gonna redo it again. Uh, click launch app and then click yes, I'm white listed. All right, so as you guys can see, it is still loading here. Or I might just skip this part of this video if it's uh, too long because I don't want the video to be very long, right? So I might just skip it and then I will return one once the process is done, all right? So, yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, it took uh, pretty long to load. Unfortunately, it took like a couple minutes to load, but usually it doesn't take too long. Usually it only takes like a couple seconds to load. So uh, probably it is due to my internet connection that wasn't very stable. So i'm really sorry for that guys um so yeah welcome to leonardo ai dashboard up here you have featured models so leonardo ai has uh many different models that you can try right so as you guys can see here we have many different models and if you scroll down here uh you have recent creation sections so these are all images created using leonardo ai look at this so you can explore it and if you uh click on it you can see this exact prompt that was being used to create this image so this is a prompt that was used to create this image right so if you want to create an image similar to this you can um copy and paste this prompt. you can use this uh, exact prompt or you might want to add some minor modifications to it to adjust your need but yeah you can uh use that prompt that same exact prompt and most likely you're not going to get like the same exact image. However, uh, the image is going to be very similar if you use that same prompt, right? So we are on the homepage. If you go to uh, community fit, um, you can see like all images that were created using Leonardo AI in the past, right? Alongside with the prompt for its image, right? So yeah, uh, that's the community fit. You might want to explore the community fit to get some ideas, to get some inspirations. If you go to personal fits, so these are all images that you've created in the past. If you've just created your account here on Leonardo AI, then obviously there is nothing here. Um, you will see nothing here because you haven't created any image yet. But as you guys can see, uh, this is my personal fit. So these are all images I have created in the past, all right? Pretty cool images. Actually, this is going to be the thumbnail of this course though. So yeah, um, let's go to training and data set. Um, actually, you can train your own data set. So, for example, you want to create an image, but that image should be uh, based on your own data set. You can do it. You can click on new data set and then uh, click on create data set. But before that, you might want to name your data set first, right? And then click create data set and then you can upload all the images here. But we're not going to focus on that. We're going to more focus on uh, the prompt, right? So you can also go to fine-tune models. You can see 
uh, many different models available here. Uh, you can uh, go to platform models. So these models are uh, created and provided by Leonardo AI. You can also click on the community models. So these are models that were uh, created and provided by you know other Leonardo AI users. And if you go to your model, uh, this is your, like your own model, uh, the model that you created yourself. So this is like your uh, data set that you trained um, on the sections. And in the favorite model, you see nothing here because I haven't added any model to my favorite models, right? Um, and you go to tools, click on AI image generation, right? So it's very simple. Um, the way it works is extremely similar to Dolly. The only thing that you need to do is to type in uh, the prompt here and then click generate. That's it. But actually, you can uh, have more authority compared to Dolly because you can change uh, the model, you can change the style, um, you can also change um, the number of images that you want to generate, right? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options. So if you uh, choose two, then the Leonardo AI is going to generate you two images, right? You can also uh, turn on this prompt magic, all right? So if you want to be surprised with a new idea or like unthinkable ideas, then you might want to turn this on. Uh, if you want to have a high contrast image, then just turn this on. But if you don't want to, turn that off. Um, you can also set the pro magic strength, right? So it is how strongly pro magic influence the output. So like the higher number, if you scroll this all the way to the right, uh, the pro magic will have a greater influence. You can also um, change the image dimensions. So usually I stick with 1024 by 1024 because that, that's the best uh, resolutions for the image, but it really depends on your need, right? Sometimes you need like uh, 512 by 512. It really depends on your need, right? And you can also um, change the width and the height of the image. Um, and the unit is in pixel. You can also change the ratio, right? So if you're uh, planning to create a thumbnail for your YouTube channel, then go with 16 by 9. If you want to create a thumbnail for your YouTube short or maybe TikTok or Instagram Reels, then go with 9 by 16. Or you just want to make a regular image, then go by 1 by 1. It really depends on what you want and what you need, right? And also the guidance scale, um, it represents like how strongly your prompt is weighted. So if you want Leonardo AI to generate you an image that is based on your given prom, uh, your image needs to match exactly with your given prom, then uh, scale, the guidance scale should be at maximum 10. But if you have like a maximum guidance scale, um, it's going to kind of limit the creativity of the AI. All right, so you actually can also uh, add image here, upload image, and then create a new image that is based or inspired on your input. All right, so yeah, scroll back up and they also have like negative prompt here if you want to add anything uh, to the negative prompt. So those things uh, will be excluded from your image, then add the negative prompt, right? So for example, if there are some things that you want to avoid, then add those keywords here and then those things will be excluded. Uh, however, if you add negative prompts, you're going to limit uh, Leonardo AI creativity. So I'm not going to add negative prompt unless there is something that I really want to avoid. I really want to be excluded. All right. So uh, for the fine-tuned models, you have like many different models. I usually uh, go with Leonardo Diffusion. And for the style, uh, I usually stick with Leonardo style because I like it. Right. And let's talk about prom, right? Because this course is about prom engineering. So it's going to be better if we stick with prom engineering first before generating the image. So if you were on image generation, if you click on prom generation, um, this is a feature that Dolly uh, does, does not have. Actually, you can create a very complex prom from a basic prom. And then you can choose like how many proms that you want to generate. For example, you want to generate eight proms. And all you need to do here is to type in your basic prom here, all right? And the Leonardo AI is going to generate you like more complex prom and also add like additional ideas to that basic prom. All right, so for example, I want to create an image of semi-robot human. 
in science fiction's environment. Alright, so I'm going to try like this basic prompt, uh, say my robot human in science fiction's environment, and I'm going to click on ID8. Alright, just click on this button and just wait for a couple seconds that Leonardo AI is going to generate you eight uh, complex prompts. Alright, so just wait. So the way it works is actually very similar to this platform, uh, social proof, right? Just enter the basic prompt, click generate, and then I will give you more complex versions of that prompt with, you know, added ideas to it, right? So, okay, cool. So now um, those eight prompts have been generated. The first one here, we have semi-robotic human stands in a futuristic neon lit city space surrounded by touring skyscrapers. The second one here, we have SMI robotic human stands in a post-apocalyptic wasteland surrounded by the ruins of a once great civilization. So pretty interesting. I guess I might want to try this. The third one, a semi robotic human stands in surreal alien landscape surrounded by strange alien flora and fauna. The fourth one here, a semi robotic human stands in a steampunk inspired world surrounded by integrated machinery and a clockwork contraptions. Okay. Number five, a semi robotic human stands in a cyberpunk inspired world surrounded by neon lit streets and towering holograms. Number six, a semi robotic human stands in a dystopian future surrounded by oppressive surveillance and oppressive authorities. Number seven, a semi-robotic human stands in a vibrant, colorful world surrounded by lost vegetation and vibrant wildlife. And number eight here, which is the last one, a semi-robotic human stands in a dream-like world surrounded by surreal abstract shapes and vibrant colors. So um, why don't we try to use this same exact prompt on this social boot prompt generator. So we're just going to copy and paste that, all right? And I'm gonna click generate, and then we're going to see um, what's going to be the complex prompt. A person in a futuristic robot armor standing in a science fiction environment. I think Leonardo AI prompt generator is better because they have like more complexity compared to uh, social boot. But again, it's totally up to you which one that you want to choose, right? So let's try it out. Uh, let's say I am interested in number five and prom five. You have two options. Either you want to copy and paste it to here and then click generate, or the more simple way is to click on generate button here, right? Just gonna click generate. Okay, cool. So now um, Leonardo AI is generating the image for us, right? Just just wait patiently. All right. So say I'm here. Here my robotic human stands in cyberpunk inspired world surrounded by neon. All right, so just wait. Uh, looks kind of interesting. Look at this, pretty cool, right? All right. Let's try another prom. So let's go back to our prom generation sections, and why don't we try? Um, why don't we try number three, right? So just click generate, and we'll see what we're going to get here. Right, so it might take you a couple seconds. Just be patient, guys. All right, I'm planning to generate like three more, then we'll be uh, done with this video. All right, all right, looks very interesting. Um, looks like he's in the middle of nowhere, I guess. But <laughs> so let's go back to our prompt generations, and why don't we try uh, prompt number one? Alright, I don't know why it takes so long. Usually it doesn't take this long. Alright, cool. Finally, we are done. Uh, very cool. I think it's kind of similar to the first one. I'm sorry. Uh, it's kind of similar to prompt number five. So I don't know why. Uh, let's go back to our prompt generations. But the thing that you need to keep in mind is the structure of this prompt. As you guys can see, like all these eight prompts have a very good and solid structure. So it always starts with the subject, a semi-robotic human, and it tells like what this robotic human does. Stands in a futuristic or stands in a post-apocalyptic wasteland 
So it gives like a clear, very clear instructions to Leonardo AI. Hey, I want this semi-robotic human and I want him to do what? I want him to stand, something like that, right? And then after that, I also provide like descriptions, context about uh, the image, right? Neon live uh, cityscape surrounded by towering skyscrapers. So this is like the additional descriptions of the image. So um, you always need to keep this structure, right? Um, always try to stick with this structure because uh, this structure has been proven to work uh, the best. Always start with the subject and then continue by um, the verb, like what he does, and also add additional uh, descriptions. All right, so we've tried number one, we've tried number three, we've also tried number five. So why don't we try number eight? A semi robotic human stands in a dream like world surrounded by surreal abstract shapes and vibrant colors. So I'm just gonna click generate. Hopefully, that's not going to be similar to this one. All right, so just wait. We'll see what it's going to look like. All right, very cool, very cool. Look at this, very vibrant color. And I don't think like the robot is very good, but the environment uh, surrounding him is amazing. The scenery is amazing. All right, so let's try one more. So let's go back to our prompt generations. And why don't we try uh, number six. A semi robotic human stands in a dystopian future surrounded by oppressive surveillance and oppressive authorities. I have no idea what it will look like, but I'm kind of curious to know what it will look like, all right? Oh, uh, very cool. I think this robot is very big, so it's pretty intimidating to all these authorities. So kind of interesting, to be honest. And again, the structure is very um, similar to the other prompts, right? Always starts with the subject, then verbs, stands, and then additional descriptions. Always stick to that rule, guys. Always stick to that structure. All right, so I think that's it. Um, that's all you need to know about uh, prompt engineering for Leonardo AI. It takes two image generations. Always try to stick to this rule. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to learn um, prompt engineering utilizing autonomous AI. So we're going to learn how to utilize agent GPT, which is autonomous AI agent, which can be our AI assistance to help us generating high quality prompts for us automatically without having to be supervised by human. So I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to utilize Agent GPT to produce efficient prompt. And you might be wondering, like, what is Agent GPT? Well, is it the same like Chat GPT? Well, actually, they're not the same. So Chat GPT is an AI chatbot where you can ask any questions and Chat GPT is going to answer your question, right? With the human-like answers. However, Agent GPT is totally different thing. So Agent GPT is actually like the latest autonomous AI technology. So you can treat Agent GPT as your AI assistant. Uh, you can assign a job or assign a task for Agent GPT to do. And then Agent GPT is going to complete the work for you without having your supervisions, without having you to dictate Agent GPT what to do. So it's going to be like, um, independent assistant which is able to operate without your supervisions like automatically or autonomously right so it's going to be pretty cool here um so to get started just click on this link and it will take you here so welcome to agent gpt um so the url is agentgpt.rework.ai all right so as you guys can see um this is what agent gpt looks like and to get started, the only thing that you need to do is to sign up. Just click sign in. I'm going to assume you haven't created your account here. So I'm just going to click sign in. As you guys can see, we have three different options that you can choose to sign in. You have uh, Google, Gmail, uh, you have GitHub, 
and also discord all right so just pick one of them this time i'm going to sign up using my discord account so i'm just gonna click discord all right so it's still loading just wait it will not take too long all right cool so now um your discord account will be connected to your agent gpt but if you don't have discord don't worry you can also sign up using github or gmail all right so just click authorize to you know give authorizations to agent gpt all right cool so welcome uh this is chat uh, agent gpt not chat gpt and the first thing that you need to do is to name your autonomous ai agent so let's see we want to name it as prompt generator right because that's going to be the main job that's going to be the job desk for our ai assistant so prompt or maybe i'm going to start with this ai prompt generator and you also need to assign the task all right what you want this ai assistant to do right what's going to be his job uh desk his job descriptions all right so i want this ai assistant to help me generating high quality prompts generate me um complex prompts for chat gpt all right so i want uh, this ai assistant to generate me complex prompts for chat gpt but i think we need to be more specific right because there are many different type of prompts um we need to specify like what's going to be the end goal here right what's your objective um actually i want this ai assistant to generate me a complex from complex from for chat gpt um related to job shipping business all right so i'm going to modify this a little bit generate me uh, complex chat gpt prompts uh, for drop shipping and e-commerce business and you might be wondering is this free well it is free all right so don't worry it is going to be free and once you're ready you can deploy your engine but before that you can also um, do the setting first um, so you might want to uh, turn this on if you want the ai to be able to generate your image uh, you can also turn this on if you want uh, the ai to be able to search uh, google for information about current events also turn this on if you want the ai to be able to write code for you right so make sure you turn all this on unless you want to exclude this then turn that off all right so just close make sure that you turn them on and then to pause it you can turn this on but again we shouldn't do it and down here we have deploy agent button all right so just click on deploy agent and now it is going to deploy our ai agent so just wait sometimes it takes a while it can be like a couple seconds or even minutes it really depends on the complexity of your uh, request right identify the target audience and needs for the dropship or e-commerce business research trending products within as you guys can see um this ai agent keep generating a new output right without having uh to be supervised without having to be dictate like hey what to do what to do um instead this ai agent can operate autonomously right which is pretty cool right if you want to stop just click stop agent and then it will stop so yeah to identify the target audience and needs so as you guys can see um these are like pretty complex prompts that you can uh, utilize all right so completing generate if you want to take your time to read just pause mode so it will pause your agent so you can scroll up and then start reading um the output right but wait it will continuously um generating output right unless you unless you stay stop unless you click on this button stop agent and then it will stop section one uh, prompts welcome to our dropship look at this uh pretty cool right and sometimes it takes uh the ai agent like a couple seconds to think it really depends on you know the complexity of your uh job right 
so yeah um that's how it works guys uh this is very new technology so i haven't used this for a very long time in fact i have only used this for like a couple weeks but i really like it though i really enjoy um this cool autonomous ai agent so it's really helpful super helpful yeah um so that's how it works if you want to stop just click stop agent and it says no more subtitles for uh so he might be wondering if you have you know additional job for him look at this um it also generates you like the problem for market research for your e-commerce or dropshipping business which is great without having you without having to be told hey i want this but having to be told like i want you to generate this prompt you only need to uh, sp specify like the job and then click deploy agent and then it will generate you it will continuously uh, generate you uh, many different prompts related to your given topic right which is amazing so yeah to stop it just click on stop agent and then you can scroll up and start reading the output that's how you do it guys very powerful tool uh, you can utilize this autonomous uh, ai agent not only for generating from but also for you know other purposes right maybe you want to do market research you want to do product research or you know arrange your marketing strategies whatever your um, objective is you can uh, utilize this agent gpt so yeah um that's how you utilize it guys um i think that's it that's all you need to know about agent gpt um uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to learn about, you know, potential ways to monetize our expertise in prompt engineering by selling ChatGPT prompts on online marketplaces like Etsy or Gumroad. So we're going to discuss more about it in the next video. So I'll see you guys there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to learn how to potentially monetize your expertise and your skill sets in prompt engineering. All right, so you've learned all the skills and knowledge related to prompt engineering. So obviously you want to find a way to monetize your expertise, right? So yeah, actually you can do it by selling ChatGPT prompts on uh, these online marketplaces. So I listed four online marketplaces. Obviously there are uh, more than these four uh, marketplaces where you can sell your ChatGPT prompt or any prompt. It can be Midjourney prompt, it can be Doll E or Leonardo AI prompt or yeah, any other prompt, right? It doesn't have to be ChatGPT prompt, but we're going to be concentrating on ChatGPT prompts, all right? So we have Etsy, we have Gumroad, we have PromBase and Prompt Attack. So before um, talking about it's one of them, it is very crucial for you me to remind you this. When you're selling ChatGPT prompt, it is very essential for you to understand that you need to sell your own prompt. You need to sell ChatGPT prompt that you created by yourself, right? Do not take someone else's prompt and then sell it as yours. Because not only that you are going to be potentially sued by the creator of that prompt, but also your account might be suspended, right? Because you're infringing upon uh, copyright regulations. You shouldn't take or steal uh you know prompts that do not belong to you right so make sure that you keep that in mind all right so let's get started we're going to uh go to etsy so just click on this uh and it will take you to etsy so obviously etsy is very large marketplace um it wasn't designed specifically for creating ChatGPT prompts you can sell like many different products you can sell print on demand you can sell um jewelry you can sell digital products on Etsy so it's not specifically designed for uh, selling prompts but there are lots of people selling chat GPT prompt if you type in chat GPT prompt all right just click on it there are many stores there are many sellers uh, selling chat GPT prompts here for example like this store sells um, 1 trillion mid journey prompts um, at $10.91 uh, it sells 70 thousands uh, chat GPT prompts uh, sell it at nine dollars twenty cents so yeah that's the price range like between five to fifteen dollars I think that's like the ideal price to sell um, this store also sell um, how to use chat GPT and prompts to create it uh, probably is kind of like um, guideline how to utilize chat GPT stuff like that or maybe it's more like ebook right 
so yeah um, there are like many different stores there are like many different sellers uh, selling chat GPT prompts here let's pick one example and see um, the sales all right let's pick this as our example um, sell it at eight dollar uh, 29 cents oh actually it's 50 percent off so like the actual price is sixty dollar sixteen dollars uh, 58 cents all right so if you scroll down uh, there are also like many other sellers selling uh, chat GPT prompts here right and some of them sell it below five dollars so that's uh, pretty good to know like the price range right um, let's go back to uh, the main menu here so yeah um, there are like many different sellers and if you want to be competitive on Etsy I totally get it um, there are like lots of competitors on Etsy you need to price your uh, product you need to price your chat GPT prompts a little bit lower than the market price so you can like stand out from the crowd right because people like customers are going to purchase uh, the one that is cheaper right that's just like the nature of human right they want to purchase um, products that is cheaper so if you go to web similar and then type in Etsy.com all right you can see like the, the amount of traffic that Etsy receive every single month look at this 470.5 million people come into Etsy uh, last month right so obviously when it comes to traffic Etsy is a huge marketplace uh, you have lots of potentials even though you have a lot of competitors but can you imagine like 470 pe million people come into this marketplace every single month um, and when you display your uh, product here there's a high potential um, your product is going to be uh, purchased by one of those people right obviously and for Etsy though if you want to list your product here it's going to cost you like 20 cents for its listing and you will need to renew it every four months so just keep that in mind so for example you're planning to list let's say five products then multiply up uh, 20 cents by five so you're going to pay one dollar um, every four months all right so every four months uh, your listing are going to be expired and you need to renew uh, those listings all right so yeah that's at sea let's go to this uh, second marketplace which is gumroad so just click on this link and it will take you to gumroad so gumroad is another marketplace that you can um, you can sell your chat GPT prompts the only difference here is the size gumroad is not as big as at sea so if you go to gumroad and then click on discover so that's like gumroad marketplace and Gumroad was specifically designed for selling digital products, right? So if you type in chat GPT prompt, just enter, right? There, there are many uh, sellers, many stores selling their chat GPT prompts, template or toolkit or whatever, right? If you go to web similar and then type in Gumroad, the size is nowhere close to Etsy but it still has a huge potentials so if you scroll down here um, there are 25 million people come into this website last month right so even though the size is nowhere close to Etsy but I think if you want to have like less competitors and you want to be more focusing on digital products you can uh, utilize this uh, marketplace to sell your um, chat GPT prompts right so yeah let's move on to the third marketplace I'm just gonna close this too um, so we don't have too many tabs and the third one here is Promebase so Promebase is different compared to Etsy and Gumroad right so Etsy and Gumroad those two marketplaces were not created or designed specifically for selling Prom but Promebase as you guys can guess from the name of this marketplace it was specifically designed to uh, sell your chat GPT Prom or any other AI prompts so just click on that link it will take you here so welcome to Promebase this is one of the largest uh, online marketplace for uh, selling your prompts um, it can be like Dolly, GPT Mid Journey, Stable Division, uh, Chat GPT Prom as you guys can see down here uh, relatively they sell at lower price for example like this one sells at $2.99, $3.99 and what else academic essay expert $2.99 uh, 
what else analysis competitors two dollar ninety nine cents. But don't worry, because there are lots of people are purchasing this product. So even though you're selling this product at a very low price, but you know that you're playing with the margin, right? So even though you're selling this product at let's say three dollars or two dollars ninety nine cents, but if there are like hundred or even thousand people purchasing your product, then obviously uh, you're going to make a lot of money too, right? So let's go to similar web and check uh, the traffic coming to those websites. Obviously, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be as big as Etsy, but we'll see. It's not going to be like hundred millions every month. Yeah, in fact, it's only like five, one point five millions. All right, one point five millions. But the thing here, here is, of four hundred millions people coming to Etsy, only like few percentage of those people coming to Etsy looking for prom. But one point five million coming to this marketplace, like the. Whole like every single one of them is interested in prom. That's the reason why they come here in the first place because they're interested to purchase prom, right? So like the whole people, like uh, the whole populations come into this marketplace are interested in purchasing, you know, either a chat GPT or maybe mid journey prom. All right, so yeah, that's the third marketplace. Let's talk about the last one here, uh, which is prom attack. Again, prom attack was uh, kind of similar to prom base uh, was specifically designed for selling proms not like Etsy or Gumroad all right so just kind of click on it I will take here take you here prom attack so this is the marketplace as you guys can see um, those people are also selling the proms at lower price maybe like two dollars three dollars four dollars so yeah relatively uh, at a lower price but you know they are playing with the margin and especially this is like digital product so you only need to create this once and it can be sold for many times so uh, the profit margin is actually 100% right so you don't have to get um, this from from your supplier like you know physical product drop shipping instead you only need to create it once and then it can be sold for maybe a thousand times if you're lucky right so obviously if you are wondering like which marketplace that you want uh, to use to sell your chat GPT prom then I'll go with prom base because um, you know it is Going to have like more traffic compared to uh, prom attack, but if you're uh, looking for like very big marketplace then I Really recommend you to go with Etsy. All right. So yeah, I think that's it guys That's all you need to know about selling chat GPT proms on online marketplaces. I'll see you guys in the next video What's up guys? Welcome back to the course in this video I'm going to summarize all things that we've learned so far and I'm also going to share a few tips and tricks on how to take all skills and knowledge that you've learned in this course um, to another level, right? So um, before getting into the topic, let me tell you that actually this is going to be the last uh, video in this course. So first of all, massive congratulations for completing the course. Um, congratulations for getting this far. I'm so proud of you. You should be proud of yourself too. And guess what? There are lots of people who really want to learn from engineering but they're not willing to take actions and when you're taking actions at very least you're getting a step closer to your goal right at very least you are a step ahead of your uh, competitors right so this is uh, definitely a good thing um, once again congratulations for taking actions all right because there are lots of people who have the same dream but they're not willing to take actions all right so let's get into the topics here um, the first thing that I want to put a very heavy emphasis on is the level of specifications. When it comes to writing prom, um, if you write your prom uh, too specific, right? You have a very high level of specificity in your prom. Obviously, you're going to limit the AI creativity, right? That's pretty obvious. However, if your prom is too general or too broad, Sometimes it can cause ambiguity, right? It can leave some rooms for uh, potential misinterpretations. So then the next questions, like the follow-up question here is how to write the prompt that is specific enough that the AI can understand what I want, but also not too specific to the point where it limits the creativity of the AI or the chat GPT or whatever AI that you're using. Well, to be honest, I don't have the answer to that questions, right? However, the more you practice, the more you write prompts, the more you do trial and errors, 
the better you're going to be. So think about this. When it comes to um, determining like the level of prompt specificity, it is very abstract. It is kind of like a gray area where there is no uh, specific rule that you need to abide. However, the more experience that you have, right, um, it's going to give you like a new perspective of how to be wise when it comes to writing from. How to not pass the limit of specificity to the point where you limit uh, the creativity of ChatGPT, but also at the same time you are specific enough, you uh, specify your instructions so AI still understands what you want, right? So yeah, that's the first thing. Let's move on to the second um, thing here. ChatGPT is definitely not a human, right? Therefore, you need to be as clear as possible. You need to be as descriptive as possible, making sure ChatGPT understands what you really want and what you're expecting to get, right? So always try um, to set your instructions uh, very clear and also provide context to it, right? Because if you don't if you don't provide context, um, ChatGPT is going to interpret your prompt uh, very creatively to the point where sometimes the output is not very relevant with your request, right? So make sure that you keep that in mind. And the second one here is when you're dealing with complex prompt, it is way better if you um, break down the complex prompt into several pieces. I'm not saying ChatGPT is not going to be able to understand um, an extremely complex prompt, but there is a potential for uh, for you to overwhelm ChatGPT capacity to think, right? Again, I'm not underestimating ChatGPT ability to interpret a very complex prompt, but it is going to be better if you uh, kind of like break down your very complex prompt into like two or three uh, smaller pieces so it's going to be easier for ChatGPT to understand like what you actually want right and also uh, it is to maximize the quality of output generated by ChatGPT right and the last one here trials and errors so prompt engineering requires your dedications to do trials and errors until you find the best prompt which produce the expected output so sometimes in your first trial you enter the prompt and then click generate sometimes the first attempt you're not going to get what you want right whether it is chat gpt whether it is ai text to image generator or sometimes or maybe most of the times you don't get uh what you want exactly but you know the more trials and error you do i'm pretty sure you're going to get more and more um close to what you want right you're going to get closer to uh your objective so yeah, you need to be willing to do trial and errors. It will take time. It will uh, take your effort, energy, but it is required to be done. So yeah, um, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, once again, thank you so much for taking the course. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been an honor and privilege for me to be your uh, instructor on Udemy. I really wish you all the best, nothing but the best guys. and. I really hope to meet you again in my next future course. I'll see you whenever I see you. Bye.